all chiefed up. The best damn Kansas City Chiefs podcast in the kingdom. Chiefs Kingdom, ACU crew, welcome back to another live podcast for that ass. It's Saturday night. We're having a little tailgate. There's no game tomorrow, Steve, but we're still tailgating. We still got a while. We got a while before our game tomorrow. We're tailgating before the tailgate, before <laughs> infinite tailgates almost. But I'll tell you what, we're going to talk a little bit about Rashi frickin' Rice. Uh, Rashi this story, Rice. This story was, was put out by the Kansas City Star. Marijuana, Chiefs playbook recovered from Dallas crash involving... Rasheed Rice says reports drugs, a Kansas City Chiefs playbook, and a check for sixteen grand were among the items recovered from the scene of a multi-vehicle crash involving Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice on a Dallas highway last weekend. Uh, it was reported ten point eight grams of marijuana. Blah blah blah. Through an open records request, the Fort Worth Star Telegram obtained a redacted report filed by Dallas police after the March 30th incident. The report lists seven victims, seven other people connected to the crash, and six vehicles involved. Officers at the scene collected items including the playbook, the check, keys, a credit card, and a necklace. The report indicates that officers also recovered drugs, though the type and amount are redacted. Steve. Redacted. What in the world? My comments are redacted. I don't have any. You're hey, redacted. He had marijuana in the car. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. n- no, but for real, like the thing that's most confusing to me. I don't care about the playbook. I don't care about the marijuana. How are you just gonna leave a sixteen thousand dollar check laying around? What kind of life are you living? Right. Dag on, bro. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people wrote us. A lot of people wrote us, and they were like, "Hey, man." They left the playbook in the car. Can we talk about that? Can somebody put up a video talking about that? That's the football. That's what we need to talk about. Steve, let's talk about the playbook. Uh, Who cares what the other stuff is? Let's just talk about the playbook. So the playbook was found in the car. There you go. There's the playbook. (laughs) He was drawing some plays. He's got his plays going. Uh, Look. Why would he have his playbook in the car? We're in the middle of the off season. He's already been like, was that like a, some sort of crazy playbook from like his rookie days or you know what I'm saying? Like who cares? Honestly, here's my thing about it. Like everybody kind of had a freak out about that, but it's like, here, here's my thing. Like, do you think that, why, are you writing a book today? No, I'm just trying to no. get your volume right. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, you keep telling me it's too high and too low. It's yeah, that's whatever. just a tad bit too low. But look, yeah, he's a uh, like. What's no, the playbook? My, who thing? cares? Who cares? What's going to happen? Was there someone from the Raiders going to show up at the crime scene and be like, "We got to get that playbook"? Like, well, the police have like it, and what everybody's saying is that the police are no obligation to not be able. Like that can get leaked. You can get pictures of that. Yeah, you can send that out to TMZ if you want it. They're like, uh, what's his name? Is it Plankton that no, tries I to get? Know. Yeah, that tries to get the the formula for the Krabby Patty. Like, is that what's happening out there? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't yeah. see what the big deal is. Like, yeah, I mean, what's, I don't what's, what's worse to me, the fact that you just hit a bunch of people because you were racing, or the fact that you left a playbook in the car? I don't care about the playbook. Right. Well, I'm just what I'm saying. Chiefs fans are just concerned about this playbook. They think Andy's going to be more mad over that than he is the the off field incident. <laughs> no. Hell I don't. No. I don't see that. Look, for more more than likely, that was probably like a dummy playbook. It was probably something installed way back in the day. Uh, it's probably not of any importance. And by the way, what what which one was it found in? It ha- it couldn't have been found in his in the in the rental. It had to be in his regular one, which all of his friends were driving. So more than likely, uh, fifteen thousand people seen that playbook anyway. <laughs> you think his friends were trying to give it to Plankton? I don't know. Trying to give out the formula. Could have been. My, that might be where the sixteen. What do you keep talking about, Plankton? Thousand. What is Plankton? I don't get is, this. Is, isn't that his name? Who? On SpongeBob, the the guy that works at the Crumb Bucket that tries to steal the secret formula to the Krabby Patty. <sighs> I don't know. I don't watch it. Mike, how do you not watch SpongeBob? I don't like SpongeBob. But yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal. I just think people wanted to talk. They wanted somebody to address it. Nobody's addressed it. Apparently, they wanted to address it. Again, I don't think it's a big deal. 
and, and I think he's got more problems with the law. But at the same time, a lot of people are saying, oh, man, he's going to prison for life. He's This is insane, guys. Like, you guys are just crazy right now with all this stuff. Like, I get that he did some bad stuff. He probably shouldn't have walked away from an accident without checking on people, this and that and everything else. A lot of these injuries are getting a lot worse once people found out who it was. Let's right. put it that way. And so it's going to happen. But check this out. I just found this article uh, from March 27th, 2023. This is in Dallas. So just less than a year ago. Well, right out a year ago. A 29-year-old man hit and killed a bicyclist in an SUV and fled from the scene. Once he was tracked down, he pled guilty to multiple charges, including leaving the scene of an accident involving death, drug po drug possession, and he had unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. That's pretty similar, except that there's no deaths involved here. This man pleaded guilty to multiple charges, and a judge accepted his plea bargain agreement, and he got only seven years in prison. Was that guy so rich? He hits a motorcyclist with an SUV. He has drugs in the car. He flees the scene. Everything else pleads guilty and gets seven years. Like this, this, there's nothing here that set, tells me that Rasheed Rice is going to get crazy amounts of jail time. There's well, nothing. There's a lot to it. And the thing about it is, is none of us are lawyers, especially here on YouTube. I, I don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Are you? One of you guys are lawyers. Uh, but no, like I did a video yesterday. Everyone, a lot of people saw it yesterday. I, I read like a Twitter thread from a, a legal expert kind of explaining what Rasheed Rice is looking at coming up. And, and literally this guy don't think it's a huge deal. Like obviously it's a huge deal. Like the offense was bad. Like it, it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible situation. Like no one's condoning what Rasheed Rice did. But the fact of the matter is he has to go through a, a legal process and the way all this is going, he's probably not going to get much of anything. Like, like they, they, they have all these charges on there. I think it's like eight felonies, but the fact of the matter is that probably none of them are going to stick. They're not yeah. going to accept those charges. It's their, it's their job to throw and see what sticks. Then right. you, you still got to go through the process that they would have to go to a grand jury. And is a grand jury going to, I mean, I've heard that a grand jury will indict a ham sandwich, but are you really going to do it? I, I just don't know. I just don't think he's got too good of lawyers. I'm telling you, look, if you haven't figured out in America, you got a, a, two different justice systems. If you got money, if you don't got money, we all know right. that. Well, so, hey, how's my volume? Everybody keeps on. telling me it's low. Mike yeah, you, told me you, to turn you went it way down. too ham on it. You told me that you messed up my volume. I had You it were right. too high. But you then went too low. We got to find a sweet spot. Where is it? Is this it? Maybe just a little bit higher. Why is it um, so sensitive that if you day? move one half of a notch? I'll just crank it all the way up and blow you all out of here. Maybe just a little bit higher than that and you're good. All right. What do you That's think? too much. That's way too much. Well, How's this it is so, what you're getting. That might be okay as long as you don't scream at us. I don't know why the, the volume's so fickle there on that one. It was. I think it was good. I think it's good now. Zen says, do you guys think he gets suspended this year or next? They can't really throw suspensions at him 100% until the justice system plays out. Right. Can you? I don't think so. I think they have to see. But uh, then again, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter. Everyone knows it actually happened. So, I mean, I guess if the NFL sees fit. Yeah, they, they may put it. him on a suspension list or something. I just don't know. People are just freaking out over this. And it's like, I don't know. And I, frankly, I don't really care. Like, it. You, can we just separate the two things? Like, yes, he did something wrong. Yes, it was bad. However, it, it wasn't the worst that could happen. Like, I'm I'm somewhere between will he get jail time or no? I'm probably on the no. Is he going to get suspended? I'm probably on the yeah. He's not going like, to get jail time. Yeah, it's like the end of the world to some of these people, and it's like it's not that bad. I, I, I'm with the, the legal expert guy. I think you're probably looking at two games suspension. I mean, the thing about it is it could be more. It could be like four to six, I guess. But if you think about, like you said this the other day, uh, Alvin Kamara beat a guy half to death and got a two-game suspension. Right. So, so like, what's what's worse? I mean, do you you tell me. 
I don't know. Well, exactly. Look, Charles Omenihu missed six games last year for for punching a woman or whoever. But then, but then again, it's pretty pretty random. I mean, Willie Gay got four game suspension for breaking a Hoover vacuum. Right. Exactly. You don't know what you're going to get. But still, Omenihu gets gets in trouble for beating up on a girl in the middle of San Francisco and San Jose, and Chiefs Kingdom loved it. It, it was fine. Uh, you know, Kareem Hunt kicks people and lies, and we're wanting to bring him back every year. And then these are the same people playing the moral police now all of a sudden. Look, the Chiefs do this all the time. They For for years and years and years, Andy and Veach and uh, the Chiefs organization has completely overlooked tons of conduct and, you know what I mean, just character issues. It's going to get you. That's what they do. That's what they do. So why, does, why do we yeah. expect any different? We think they're going to get angry now? Well, I mean, to be honest, nowhere if he wouldn't have lied. To be honest about it, they knew that he had character issues. They withheld that information from all of us. None of us knew that he had character issues until he showed his ass. And then all of a sudden, it was Adam Schefter. Well, the Chiefs knew he had character issues before they took him in round two. Like that, it was a known thing that he hung out with a bad crowd of people and that he could get in trouble. That was a known fact. And apparently it was just for the Chiefs because we never heard that. Did right. you ever hear anything about character issues from Rashi Rice? Maybe just a little bit, but I don't think it ever went to an extent. Yeah, I, I heard less from Rashi Rice than I've now heard about Jermaine Burton. Jermaine Burton is going to be the next pick. <laughs> That's what we're trending to. Well, I just posted a thing today on X about uh, DeCorian Clark from UTSA and... Um, Joshua Cephas, guy? man. Josh Cephas from UTSA. Those two guys are both supposed to be two of the most athletic, fast receivers in the draft. They both have character issues. And I was like, key up Brett Veach, well, here he comes, baby. Here, here's my thing. The thing about that is, is I've had an offensive sleeper and a defensive sleeper in this draft since the get-go. Like, Mike, I think you can confirm this. Like, pretty much since draft process started, I said Joshua Cephas could be a sleeper wide receiver and Kamala Haddon could be a sleeper cornerback. And I'm sticking to my guns on those two. Right. Harmon says, you guys quit sugarcoating this incident. Sugarcoating. What, what, what are we sugarcoating? What do you want us to do? There's hey, nothing hey, good yeah. about the incident. I mean, he was, yeah. a, he was a jackass. Right. I mean, Nobody we, condoned it. We didn't say good right. for him. I wish they'd have just had a nice little street race. And like, nobody's sugarcoating it. We're just saying that at the grand scheme of things, nobody died. These are all not going to stick. No. Did he have stupid judgment? A hundred percent. But are you going to, I would love to see all these people throwing stones, what they did back when they first got their license. And when they, you know, and, and then by the way, put them in sports cars and give them hundreds of thousands of dollars and let's see what they do. <laughs> see what happens. See what happens. It'll be great. Still not condoning it. Just saying, let's, a little bit of logic, a little bit of... Another thing is, is people were on. so worried about the marijuana in the car. Does the NFL even test for marijuana anymore? I don't even think they care. I don't even think they test for it anymore. I could be wrong, but... I don't know. Well, that's what um, that's what Tavondre Sweat just got DWI with. Yeah, I don't think anybody cares about that. It was marijuana. Uh, I bet you somebody still takes a shot on him. I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is, so we can go ahead and move on from the Rashi Rice situation, is it was a bad situation. No one's condoning what that guy did. Like, what we're hoping is that he's going to learn from it and not do anything stupid going forward. Like, he's in the slap nuts category right now. He's got to work his way back down out of that slap nuts category. But the thing about it is, is legally, he's rich that's how this world works. Everyone knows it. Like he's going to pay off half of those families. Charges are going to get dropped. Um, a lot of them are not going to stick. He's going to have a good lawyer. I think she races, the, he's yeah, not going to do a whole lot. I think he's facing more on a civil lawsuit side than he would be illegal. Like Absolutely. A, but they'll I settle just, out of court. They'll settle out of court. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest, I just really don't care. Like just let it play <laughs> out. Look, why are we in the business? Why are we in the business? Like, who are we? Who is everybody in the comments? Who is everybody on Twitter to be complete know-it-alls about every situation and be the judge, jury, and executioner over stuff that they don't even know about? Because we don't know anything about anything except for what anybody comes to us. And do we even believe half of what the media tells us these days? No, but we do know he was racing a car and wrecked it and almost killed a bunch of people. That's a fact. Okay. So we can can talk about how he's an idiot. That's okay. But can you be judge, jury, and executioner? I can say this. 
if everyone here, including me and you and everybody watching right now, was judged on our darkest moment, we would all be looking at this a little bit right. differently. But don't you have to? Yeah. <laughs> you have to say, look, made a mistake. Don't condone it. But let's get let's learn from it and get better. If you can continue, one hundred percent, to yeah. do the mistake, that's the problem. So, exactly. I mean, I, that is what it is, and that'll be the final word on it. Because to be honest, again, don't really care. I'm going to let it play out first. Yeah. Like, that's why we really haven't really spoke about it to this point. And now that we're talking about it, everybody's like, everybody quit talking about it. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll you make just, 14 other videos about it. You said to um, quit talking about it. I'm just saying. You told me to shut up. You said shut up. Well, we're done I here. mean, everybody wants it to quit, you know. So stop. Talk about it. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? What do we want to talk about then? I don't know, man. A lot of stuff to talk about. Draft it's the off season. Few weeks. Yeah, it's I don't the think anybody season. cares about draft. I, I've uh, come yeah. to the I've come to the conclusion that ninety percent of Chiefs fans on uh, YouTube don't care about the draft. Yeah, I don't think they do either. I think I they think, would rather talk about how they hate Rasheed Rice right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is what I've come to the conclusion about. I think, believe it or not, I mean, it seems like you. I don't like to go around calling people bandwagon fans. I don't like to go around saying this or that. You know, by all means, come on in. Come on in. I don't care. But you will see that people that didn't grow up with the draft being their Super Bowl because your team stinks every year, like the Chiefs, from like the entire time I've been alive just about, minus the last few years. Uh, that's your Super Bowl, man. That's when you go into and you try to figure out, like, who is the guy Who's the Patrick Mahomes? And then we finally hit that Patrick Mahomes. So now you get all these guys, and then people's just like, eh, just let Veach pick it. Don't talk about it. Like, <laughs> well, 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 Veach is definitely going to pick it. I don't think Veach is going to be like, hey, let me call up Mike and Steve from All Chief Dev and see if they'll make these picks right. for me. But do you know, I feel like the people... He probably the, should sometimes. I feel like so. the average person that's just come into the fold doesn't appreciate the, the team building process. They just don't care. Like I would agree with that. This new batch of Chief fans just say, hey, I just trust Veach. Just trust Veach. Like, just because you talk about the draft, I mean, you don't trust Veach. That's an easy way to say I'm not paying attention until in football until the season starts. <laughs> yeah, um, the off season. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, it I was mean, nice today, man. Look, it nice weather. There was nice weather in KC today. I'm sure everybody went out and done something nice there's with a, family. There's a group of us here, Mike, that – we're hardcore fans. That's like we think about the Chiefs every day of our life, whether it's the off season or the season, and we want to talk about it. But there's a lot of people you have to remember, like they're they're Chiefs fans, but they don't care about football when it's not football season. That's true. I mean, man. think about it. like I, I like the Royals. I like to keep up with the Royals Doesn't during everybody... the baseball season, but I don't care what's happening in the off season. Right. Don't everybody have to take a little bit of a step back? Isn't there at some point during the year that even you get a little tired of just waking up and obsessing over Chiefs news? Like, don't you just want like a week to just be like, I'm tired of talking about this. Can I just reset? I mean, Meh. we ain't going to get it, but. Meh. It doesn't <laughs> bother me. It. it doesn't bother me. But yeah, um, let's talk about the draft a little bit, man. Um, I guess what can we talk about here? We, we've talked about pretty much everything draft wise. We've done a million Mock drafts that you guys can watch here and on Patreon.com uh, slash All Chiefed Up. Just wanted to throw this out there. I think we've said it on one other live, but uh, to thank everybody that, that helped support us during our downtime on YouTube when they demonetized us, uh, we've decided to make our Patreon $1 memberships. So for just $1, you can go over there and get a bunch of content. Like there's a bunch of content, like draft content, you name it. You can even go back and look at content during the season if you want. Uh, there's some phone backgrounds, things like that. Go over there. Patreon.com slash all chiefed up. It's literally one dollar. Like if you Uno. guys all go do that, that'd be awesome. Uno the Nato. TGZ two bomb. There was sunshine today, three peak confirmed. Dude, I felt like in Kentucky <laughs> it has rained for forty days and forty nights. I was about to I was make actually the arc. Well, I was getting ready to ask you, like, I figured you'd be calling me soon saying your house was going to flood. It's close. It's close. The river yeah. is up really high. The Ohio River is super high right now. Yeah, I had a guy come in and tell me the other day he was in the, uh, the bridge right by your brother's house. Uh, the water's pretty much up to the bottom of it, so it's probably about to mm -hmm. flood. So I was yeah. wondering about that. We're close. The, the river has to get to, I want to say, 68 feet. If the Ohio River gets to 68 feet, it's in my house, five feet. So... It was close. It was like 52 last week. 
It just won't yeah. quit raining here. But we did get a little bit of rain today. Got to get out of the house. Got to walk around. Went to a park. Walked around. Seen a bunch of children having birthday parties in the park. I smelled the <laughs> smell of grilled hamburgers and hot dogs. I missed it, man. I'm ready for winter. You miss you miss it. going to children's birthday parties. No, I missed eating hot hamburgers and hot dogs. <laughs> uh, but look, yeah, I, I'm tired of winter. I'm tired of it. Hey. I'm not a winter guy anymore. I'm I don't old. care. I like all of it. I love it. I love it. TGZ with the two bomb. We appreciate you, my brother. Yeah, we appreciate you. Um, got a five bomb from Pet Bobcat, which is now a front runner for best name on YouTube. Pet uh, Bobcat. He says, our new NCAA nil rules going to turn high round draft picks into prima donnas. Uh, absolutely could. I, 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 I'm You're a, already seeing it. Look, the NIL, yeah. is, the NIL sucks. It's, it does. It's made, um, college, college basketball stinks. Dude, yeah. everything about college now is just, I remember, I miss the days where they paid them under the table. Right, go back to that. Look, go back to the days when Kansas would pay recruits under the table, send them Reebok stuff in the mail, and get right. them in there. Now they're doing Adidas or whatever they're doing, you know. Uh, let's go back to that. Look, it's just turning all these, in, these kids, you're literally having to raise money to get a kid to come to college. And then you have to pay them to stay. You're trying to pay them to not declare for the NBA. You're th these. It's you coach professionals now, but they're not professionals. They're 18 year old kids that have no clue how life works, and they can just jump from school to school, and yeah, the there's no penalty. Too, yeah, it, it's it's bad. Like they've really Don't screwed up it. the NCAA. Steve, we sound like a bunch of old geezers. You know, we like, are. Oh. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. I mean, look, I think the NCAA sucks <laughs> when it comes to, like, not allowing people to, like, Johnny Manziel. Oh, you can't sign an autograph for money. Shut up. But that's at the same kind, time. That's fine with me. Like, yeah, but at the whatever. same time, like, paying these guys, like, multi-million dollar deals to do billboards for Planet Fitness. <clears throat> yeah, on, but, hey, Pet Bobcat, you're, you're right. That You're already seeing Like Mike said, you're already seeing it. I mean, look at, like, Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. Like, they don't even participate in anything anymore. They're like, oh, they're saying that I'm going to be the first pick in the draft. I'm done for until then. I'm going to go play. Them? I'm going to go play PlayStation now. Look, if you, can't, if you can't figure out that Marvin Harrison Jr. is a good football player by watching all 50 games he's played in college and high school, do you really need him to t take all the pads off and run 40 yards? No, but I do feel like when when you're talking about like the way these scouts look at measurables and things, and it, it makes a big deal. I think that that I, it kind of makes it look like they're trying to hide something when they refuse to well, do it. Even even the combine is out. Look, I bet you the combine changes within two to three years. They don't need them. They got GPS metrics on them now. They GPS everything. They know how fast these guys can can rip a fart. They're like, they're, dude, they're wizards, Mike. Yeah, like they, they know everything about these guys. You got a, a 10 bomb from our boy Adam. What's up, Adam? He said, finally caught you guys live. Have you been missing us? Wow. You've been missing us a little, miss Adam. We've been, been missing, missing you, buddy. <laughs> said he's ready for the draft. But yeah, man, I think we're all ready for the draft. But here's the thing, man. Like this month has been like miserably brutal, slow. Man. Miserably slow. Like I might have to pick up another job this month's been so slow. And it's like, like I'm not even kidding. It's been brutal. But uh, it's going to get worse after the draft, man. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't love draft content. Like I said, it takes a really – it takes a hardcore guy. Because a lot of people say <laughs> – well, a lot of people say, man, mock drafts are dumb. Like, everybody just guesses wrong. It's not a, it's not about if you hit or miss the person. It's the exercise involved. It's like learning it, you know. It's like, uh, yeah. you know, everyone plays the lottery all the time, but they're never going to win it, you know. They just yeah, do it. One random guy when they shut it down for six hours, <laughs> and then come back and pick it. Yeah, man. But Chris appreciate the, the five gifted, baby. Appreciate thank the you. ten, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, Chris Wright with five gifted. Chris, five gifted. Let's go. Right in the house. Chris, you know what? Legend himself. You That's know what? Legendaries. I got for Chris. Legendaries and, and ketchups in the chat. You know what for I got everybody. for Chris? What do you got for him? I can feel it all the way down in my plums, getting all swollen. With a light blue hue to them, fresh and juicy, ready for the picking. Hey, that plum looks good. You can I trade it for your Twinkie? Don't let the juice spill down my chin. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> fill, fill it in my plums. Fill it in my plums. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, Chris is a big uh, Chris. I, I've learned that Chris likes some draft guys. I think Chris might be a Jordan Morgan guy, and he might be a Troy Franklin guy. I'm not for sure about Franklin, but I think Morgan's a big guy for Chris. But you know what? It's funny because normally us and Chris Wright are on the same page with guys, but I hate Troy Franklin. 
I'm not a fan. Look, I was on that. Okay. I, I mean, I've been mean to tell you this. I was on that. And, um, there was a little outside information that's been wrong about Troy Franklin. Does he still drop the ball? Yeah. I don't love it. Um, but did you know NFL.com at the combine had listed all of his testing measurables completely wrong for like the past month? <laughs> like, so it was saying he ran a I'm, one six five ten yard split, and the dude actually ran like a one five one. <laughs> well, you know that's Poor that's dude. that's one thing, and that does kind of suck for him. But I was going off the eye test. I, I tend to do that more than I do the measurables. Right. And I'll tell you what really turned me off to to Troy Franklin. Besides the drop rate in college, uh, his gauntlet drill. Yeah, the gauntlet drill was kind of crappy. It, he but looked dude, awful. But, dude, look, he's six two and a half, one eighty three. 183. To me, he's just a little too small. He's bumped off his routes too much. He's, he's going to be hard to beat a physical press man guy. But, look, he runs a 4-4. Four, four. He has a 1-5-4 10-yard split, not a 1-6. He's got almost a 30-inch He's got a 39 inch vert, which is elite. His his knock is literally his ten percent drop rate, and his hands are tiny. But that's probably why he dropped it. But look, I give he's him got a little chance. hands. Yeah, I give him a chance. I was like, look, I'm going to go back and watch 2022 film. Let's see if he got better or worse. He was good in 2022. I think he played better in 2022 than this year. So now, I'm not so bad on Troy Franklin. If you want to take Troy Franklin within pick, I still don't like him in the first round. But if you want to take yeah, him sometime no. between 35 and 50, I'm completely fine with it. I, I wouldn't want to see the Chiefs trade up for him, though. Would you rather have Troy Franklin or Devontae Walker? <sighs> That's tough because Devontae Walker is just kind of like that boom bust guy. Like if he hits, he could be like. I a think there's a guy. lot of those though because like I love Xavier Leggett, but I think he's boomer bust. Dude, there's you big know, time. What do you guys think? A I know lot you of guys, those guys. Look, I hate people. I know people don't like. I, I said I hate people. I, I meant to say you do. I know though. people hate draft content. But would you guys like to see all chiefed up, put together an all 2024 draft class boom bust team, and we'll go through every position and pick our boom bust prospects? That would be fun. An all boom bust team for 2024. Are you trying to get give us more homework, man? We're already just up to our neck in this stuff. We don't have homework. I go right. I can name them right now. <laughs> They're big, dude. I've been thinking of this for a while. Devontae Walker's on that one. Yeah, for sure. He's um, nasty, dude. There, there's a lot of those guys in this draft. I, I do I do feel that way. Dude, when you watch Devontae Walker play at Kent State a few years ago before, you know, the whole transfer debacle. I did never watch him play at Kent State. Dude, please. He I can honestly like he, tell you I've never watched a Kent State game in my entire he life. He looks like he would be the greatest wide receiver since, who knows, name any big X wide receiver you can think of, and, like, he looked like he could have been that. And then at North Carolina, he just kind of fizzled. It wasn't horrible, but he kind of fizzled. And he went to Drake May. He went from random quarterback to Drake May. Weird. I don't know. He, he's, pretty a, weird. he's an enigma, dude. Something about him. He's an enigma. an enigma. You know what's an enigma? Is we have 305 people in here, and I don't feel like we have that many likes. You Come need to hit on. that. Hit that like button, baby. Go go take two seconds. Hit the like button. Help us out a little bit. If you're new to the channel, we appreciate you stopping by. We're all chiefed up. We do Kansas City Chiefs content year-round. Hit that sub button if you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan, because uh, why wouldn't you? And also, uh, like I was saying earlier, if you guys don't care, you can go to patreon.com slash up. Join over there for $1 a month, and you get all kinds of extra content. Uh, a lot of extra content. It's just one buck, man. One dollar. Numero uno. Right. Richie says, uh, my friend in Oregon says Troy Franklin is a developmental guy. I kind of think so. I don't think he's polished perfectly. You know, he kind of reminds me of Steve. He kind of reminds me of the guy that um, New England took, Tyquan Thornton. Remember him? A fast burner from Baylor, and they surprised everybody and took him in round two. And everybody's like, what in the world are you doing? And then he kind of stunk last year. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Chris says, at 32, wide receiver, he wants Leggett or Franklin. So either your boy or... If they're both there and they take Franklin over Leggett, I'd probably throw up in my lap. <laughs> I would feel like <laughs> Uh, Stephen Bill, <laughs> Chris Wright, Josh Zimbauer, they're all throwing out yeses, Steve. You know what they want to hear? They want that uh that all boom bust team is what they're <laughs> wanting, baby. We'll do it then. I don't care. We need to release our top fifty this week. We need to do a lot of other things. We gotta go ahead and update our Chiefs predictions. We've done two volumes of that so far. We need to look at that and see what we need to tweak there. So we got our work cut out for us, Mike. Let's just keep adding to it. What else you want to do? 
Yeah, look, draft is within, um, I want to get the exact day. We got one week. In two weeks, draft will be over. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's coming like up this, soon. We will be streaming, right? Like, it'll already be over because I think the third day they do it early. So it'll be over by like six or seven. What do you guys think about us streaming the entire draft? Put that, let's do a poll. Can you make a poll? Do you have that up or? Look, you I'll tell you this. It? I'll tell you this. If I stream this entire draft, you all better be here supporting this thing. That's true, man. <laughs> you can't be out here clicking back and forth and going to inferior channels. You can't be clicking. Look, you got to keep me afloat. You got to throw me some cash every once in a while so I can order me a pizza. Do something. But <laughs> look, look, here's what I was thinking. If you guys really want us to really go hardcore and you guys want to come on here and watch the draft and talk amongst yourselves and listen to what we think about picks and who we think could get traded and this and that and everything, and that includes round one. Me and Steve usually get together with the family and the pops, and we, we grill and we watch it, and we just come on and talk about the pick. But we're seriously considering coming on here and talking with you guys and just having a good time all three days. So if we do that... um. I was thinking about putting together like player cards and everything, man. Why not? First round player cards. If some if John Denver gets drafted, I'm gonna click up the John Denver graphic and I'm gonna say John Denver. Uh, he has good vocal range. He uh, don't fly in airplanes. You that know? John that John Denver's full of shit. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny. Oh, John Denver. John Denver. Is it too early to make John Denver? I'm not really making fun of John Denver. I, I kind of like it. Is anyone sing Rocky Mountain High? How can you not like that? No, no. What's the other song I'm thinking of? Country Roads. Is that John Denver? Country Roads. Is it? Dude, I want to get. Is it John Denver? Yeah, man. Then, then yeah, he's awesome. Look, I want what? to go. Will you make a road trip with me to look? And I know I've lost you at the first sign. Will you make? A, will you make a road trip with me to West Virginia? No, hell no. I know you hate it. Let's I do. I, I felt though. like I was going to get murdered last Look, time I was there. Let's go to Morgantown for one night. Let's catch a West Virginia football game mm -hmm. and let's sing John Denver with the crowd. I think it would be amazing. Let's do it. Let's go celebrate Johnny Denver. As long as we don't stop in between there and we home. We don't have to. We'll get gas in Lexington. I think we'll be fine. Just for, uh, so everyone knows what we're talking about here, back when we played music and we were on tour, we stopped one time in West Virginia, and I got out of the car and went into a convenience store, and I felt like I was entering a Rob Zombie movie. Uh, there was a lot of seven-foot-tall redheaded guys spitting tobacco juice at my feet and telling me I wasn't from there. Yeah. Ooh, Josh Zimbauer says he's an hour from Oregon Town. Look, if Josh finds us some tickets and hooks us up, we're going to go watch a game with Josh Zimbauer. And we're gonna sing "Thank God." No way, they don't sing "Thank God" I'm a country boy. What? What? <laughs> they're singing. They're singing a uh, West Virginia Mountain Mama. That's what they're singing. Country Here. road. They're singing this one. Take me home. West Virginia. I like this creek in the background. Country right, road. Right. That's what they're doing, man. We're gonna be out there singing "Country Roads" with them. It's going to be a time, baby. Yeah, Chris Wright. It was like House of a Thousand Corpses, man. I thought I was done. It was pretty wild, man. There's a lot of cool like college venues, though, I'd like to go to. Like Not West me. Virginia's one. I'd love to go to Iowa game. I, don't I like, like people that they, enough. I like that they, the Iowa game, how they turn and they look at the hospital and they applaud the kids in the hospital. I love that. Uh, I think it would be cool to go to, um, which one? Virginia Tech, where they come out to enter Sandman. Who doesn't want to do cool? Like, I want to see all that live, man. That'd be cool, man. Mountain Mama. I might be an anomaly, actually, because I, like, literally dig into draft content and really have to watch a lot of college tape, but I don't care for college football. Like, I don't care to watch it when it's happening. We're not there for the football. We're there for the John Denver sing-along. I can sing along to John Denver in my car. With, Let's turn it up real loud. With 70,000 people? Look. Why do um, they serve in West Virginia at football games? Are they known for anything? Like, do they have any cool foods? Pretzels or something? What are you, what are you having? Like, they serve roadkill? Like, possum sandwiches? <laughs> what do you serve in West Virginia? Mike, you can't be from Kentucky making fun of West Virginia. Really? We make fun of Eastern Kentucky because it touches West Virginia. It is West. It's the same place. That's what I'm saying. I know. There's nothing wrong with not wearing shoes around, bro. Dude, it's scary. It's a little scary, I'll, I'll say. 
Dude, I know, I know we're not talking about football right now, but we could. I don't really care. And, Let's talk about the draft. Before we talk about the draft, though, you know, like, I just want to talk to you, like, brother to brother for a moment. Everybody can talk about this. You remember when we grew up and we lived on that place in, in our town, ta- like, Clarkson, Kentucky. If anybody wants to Google it, that's where we grew up. Tiny I bet there's probably, like, what, 5,000 people in that whole place? I think you're overshooting it. I think I could be. Probably, like, what, 2,000? Something like that, probably. But we had like an acre, right? What dad always say? Y'all go out there and mow the grass. <laughs> he loved it. He would wake us up at five in the morning mowing grass. He'd have the lights on mowing grass at 5 a.m. Every Saturday, <laughs> never fails, waking me up. But he'd say, go mow the grass. And today, Steve, I had an epiphany. 41 years old, I'm getting ready to be, driving down the road. And I looked at Kayla and I said, I miss mowing grass in Clarkson as a kid. Like I shouldn't have took that for granted because some about riding on a lawnmower, smelling fresh cut grass in the springtime. It was therapeutic, man. And I miss it. I can't do that now. I don't even have grass. I've barely got a backyard. You can come mow my grass anytime you'd like. You got a lawn, a riding lawnmower. I ain't pushing it. It's push. You got to come push it. Get you a riding lawnmower. That's what I'm saying. But I miss that. Right. You miss going out and like on fresh cut grass when the sun's coming down and, and you just go out barefoot and shoot hoops. I miss just being a kid, dude. Like like Larry Bird out there. We were like little Larry Birds. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm just missing being a youth. I'm old. That's all it is. Like it's funny because like when you think about things like that and you miss doing something when you're a kid or it just seemed like the world was better then and everything. Which granted, it was. It probably but, was. But I think a lot of it is is you just miss that feeling of not having stress or worries or anything like that, because you had none of that as a child. You didn't even grasp the concept of it. That's what you miss. No, we argued. Pops would be go, like, go out and mow the grass, Mike. And I'm be like, man, I don't want to, I want to do, and I was doing something stupid. And now it's like, I would love to just go mow the grass, man. Man, Mike, I, you, you can mow my grass anytime, dude. I don't anytime want to mow you want. your grass. Like, I, I need to mow, mow it tomorrow. Home's grass. I need to mow it tomorrow so you can come, you can come over and help. But let's talk, about, uh, let's talk about the draft a little bit more. Everybody wants to talk about the draft. Everybody loves the draft. <laughs> Speaking of, let me go look at our poll and see if everybody wants us to cover the draft. Wink said the world sucked then, too. I don't know, man. The 90s wasn't all that bad. The 90s was a much better time. Look. We had a that, wild Bill in the White House running amok, baby. He was <sighs> he was fighting them off left and right, you know. Are you are you having a party at your house? Juice is fun. Can you hear the TV? I can Everybody hear something. House, Everybody in this house is deaf. I think they're just the TV's on three thousand. Mike's having a party, guys, and he didn't I'm invite not. any of us. See how it is. People's insane. Right. Samuel well, says, "Please talk about the draft." <laughs> Sorry, Samuel, <laughs> we're bored and you're deaf. <laughs> <laughs> so for the love of god i don't care about how much you love grass mike you sound like you love grass as much as rashi rice at this point <laughs> wish i got a sixteen thousand dollar check that i could just throw in my car and not cash <laughs> that'd be nice uh okay so here's something that i wanted to talk about with the draft uh i actually have a clip from a, a previous video we had done that i was going to use as a short probably tomorrow or something but it was me stating my thoughts on that. I think the Kansas City Chiefs can draft for best player available. Uh, like a lot of people think that the Chiefs have to draft offensive tackle. They have to draft wide receiver. I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think that the Chiefs are in a position to where they can draft best player available. Yeah, me too. What are you eating? A piece of chocolate. Why'd you eat it so creepily? I thought twice about it because now I'm going to just like be dry mouth chocolatey. But I made that decision. I got to lie in it. I got to deal with it right now. So. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think the Chiefs can can draft for best player available. I think if there's good value at the end of the first round, it doesn't matter what position they are. They're going to take it. If there's a player on their big board that falls to early 20s that they had way up there, like Trent McDuffie, they might go up and get them no matter what the position is. Yeah, I believe that. I don't think they have to sit still. I don't believe. Honestly, I think they've got ideas. This is why we do mock drafts anyway. Isn't that right? Like, you just keep taking random players. Like, the one you just released today, you took that defensive tackle, Jerzon Newton, right? Yeah, Johnny Newton fell to 32. If he falls to 32 and they don't take Johnny Newton, I'd probably kick my TV. Well, look, a lot of people said Johnny Newton's never going that late. 
Don't ever, never say never. Daniel Jeremiah just come out with his top 50 and Johnny Newton's rated like 36. Which is wild. They don't think that most teams like him the same way Kalaja Kansi wasn't for everybody. So it's very reasonable. Nobody knows how this goes. So you just keep doing these over and over and you keep, that's how you get prepared, you know? Because if, if it ever starts falling the way that you've done it before, then you're like, ooh, I kind of know how this is going to work a little bit. Let's see what happens. But I'm with you. I think there's a few guys. They probably got 15 guys that they really would love to have in round one. And if they was to fall into the 20s, Brett Veach may be like, hey, let's go. Go get him. Yeah, about time. Says he had a 26 cent check that he never cashed. That's pretty baller. Bro, me too. I got like a $1 check. That's you know what it reminds me of? I had a friend in high school and we all worked at like a Taco Bell in high school. And, um, we, you know, of course we were getting our like hundred and some dollar checks each week. That's what we got, you know, cause we were making $5 an hour or something. Uh, but me and another one of my friends were at that, that friend's house. And we realized then, which we always suspected that he was a rich kid, but we found every paycheck that he'd ever got in a drawer and he never cashed any of them. He didn't know you're supposed to cash him. He just didn't. He didn't need it. And we were so mad at him. Like there was actually like a 60 or 90 day window to cash the checks. And he was literally just letting them go to waste. He was just giving money away. That's funny. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. Rasheed Rice is out there doing that. That's true. To the tune of 16 and a half grand. So if you think of the chiefs, <laughs> if the chiefs want to trade up, you think there's, you think any team will work with them? No, I'm not saying that nobody will. I'm sure there is a team out there that would. But it, it'd probably need to be a team that's not very competitive at the moment. I feel like it, it, it'd have to be a team that needs to rebuild. And if they got the better end of the deal, they'll do it. I think if it's a team that's directly competing with the Chiefs in the current moment, they're not going to do anything to help them. Right. I think, look, if you got an NFC team, you got a chance. If you've got... Um, like Maybe like the Saints or someone like that, you know? Right. Which that they're like 16. That's going to be tough. Um I'm trying to think of the 20s. Like, bro, Schmo the other day, he said, man, I wish they'd trade with the Dolphins. They're at 21. Now, look, you're directly competing with the Dolphins, but you're not in the same division, and the Dolphins only have four picks. Dolphins wouldn't trade with them. But they've only got four picks. Do You don't think they, you know, they don't nope. bite the bullet just to get some extra picks? No, they'd find somebody else to trade with. Okay. Uh, Wink says trade back. I do think that's a possibility for the Chiefs. In this I would draft. like to trade back. But, look, if they won't let you trade up, why they want to trade back? That's just ultimately giving us more picks to beat you with. It, like I said, it depends on the trade partner. I think there's a very few that want to work with the Chiefs right now. Well, I honestly think it comes down to look. I think it's how much we're willing to offer to come up. I think anybody will work with you, but I think you may have to overpay compared to some teams. Yep. Celsi, Which I don't want to do. Celsi, what's up, my man? Thanks for dropping in. You go take care of the lady. Oh, snuck away. Sneak back, sneak back. Yeah, don't get caught, man. Don't, don't get, get caught. caught, man. Don't get caught. We got a replay coming. You can just watch the replay. <laughs> it's it's much cheaper to watch the replay than getting a divorce lawyer, buddy. Don't mm. do it. We're sleeping on the couch. You're sleeping on the couch tonight if you don't hurry up and get back. Get back in there. <laughs> do work. Do work. Uh, so, okay, well, since we were talking about that, what I, I guess are there any players like – Johnny Newton, right? Are there any other players that if they fall down to 32 and the Chiefs don't take them, that you'd be kind of like just mind blown? Um, And I'm not yeah. talking about obvious, like, oh, Joe Walt's going to fall to 32. We know right. that's not freaking happening. Uh, like somebody that really could. Like is there somebody that you think could drop to 32 and you think the Chiefs would take them off of pure value? Right. Um, geez, that's a tough question because you never know. Look, I think, okay, so let's just say, for example, the big like the, four wide receivers are gone. Let's just say Brian Thomas is gone and you got A.D. Mitchell, Lad McConkey, Ricky Persall, Xavier Worthy, blah, blah, blah. I think if there's that many there, you can take a tackle or whatever else you want. Right. I think, well, I, I think if there's that many there and premise, let's just say there's nobody but those receivers. I still think there's so many there that you could try to get out of it, right? Unless one yeah. of those you just loved. Because, again, these are our rankings. These are rankings of everybody else. What's the Chiefs rank these? Maybe the right Chiefs here. have Wyatt McConkie as their number one wide receiver. That's a good example here. Chris Wright says Mims. Uh, what about Mims? If he falls there, do you think it'd be stupid not to go ahead and grab him? Just off um, the upside? Right. And see, uh, Amarius Mims is a, a complete monster. He doesn't have a lot of film. 
He's a little green, but he shows that he can play the position. Is he going to compete right away? I think he would probably be better to sit and learn. But, boy, I think he's got all the tools. I don't know. It's weird because, look, did the Chiefs – the Chiefs proved last year with with Felix that Felix was almost a luxury pick. He wasn't required to come in and do nothing big, and we still won the Super Bowl, right? So we can afford to take luxury picks in the first round. We don't necessarily need a first round guy to come in and be productive. What kind of tools do you think he has? I don't know. Mims. Like, what do you yeah. like about Mims? Oh, what do I like about Mims? I think he's ginormous you can't beat that i think he shows pretty good footwork to be six foot eight i think he anchors pretty well i think he's pretty smooth in the run game there's just a lot of things that i just need to see more on film i think the the dude's only got like what two yeah. games three now games I'm in, now i'm intrigued to know what you thought i meant by that question <laughs> i don't know what you thought about like, it do you think like do you think i was asking about like his tool set like did he have some benfords yeah, I was like, like, is he, is he like, like from Home Improvement, he rocking the Mil- Ben for tool set, Milwaukee, or like, um, did he have like Spicoli's dad's it's tools? It's pronounced Milwaukee. The ultimate set of tools. You remember that in Wayne's World? He said yeah. it's pronounced Milwaukee. That was uh, Alice Cooper. Uh, yeah. Ray Ray says, uh, "Ad Mitchell, uh, okay. what if he falls? Do you take Ad Mitchell's at thirty two? I consider taking him, but I look. There's a lot more." There's a lot more people saying that A.D. Mitchell could follow the first round. Again, a little bit of a character thing. He's had to try to explain as to why he takes so many plays <laughs> off, right? Uh, but I think he's an alpha-type receiver if he can get it together. I really do. I think he's good. I would personally like the pick. I don't know if the Chiefs – I mean, who knows? But, yeah, I don't – if there's a bunch of receivers there, I still don't take A.D. Mitchell. Doesn't it always just depend on who, what the Chiefs think, right? What if A.D. Mitchell's the Chiefs' first – on their board, like, what if they have the big That's three the and then thing. Andy Mitchell's four? That's the main thing that everybody I think needs to realize, and it's easy to forget when you start jumping into this and looking at players that you like and everything else. But the fact of the matter is, whatever's on that Chiefs big board, Ad Mitchell might be their top guy. Yeah, we don't know. He they could have Ad Mitchell above uh, Romo Dunze. Not do saying I, it's true, but do you I could. think that? No, but I mean they very well could, and they're going to go strictly off of that. Well, me and Steve have talked about this too. Maybe we can throw this into more stuff. We were talking TGZ. about doing... No. I don't think... If Mims shops at Harbor Freight, they better hope they don't draft him. Oh, yeah, yeah. His tools no, are going to break. We were talking about maybe doing a Chiefs top 30. Like, take out the wide... Or not take out the wide receivers. Take out quarterbacks. Take out any position we wouldn't draft and come up with a Chiefs big board, right? Because the Chiefs are not going to have Caleb Williams on their big board. Right. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see, like, who they would have on their big board, right? Like... I would say their first their first guy on their big board is probably Malik Neighbors. Well, then here's it's my probably thing. Joe Wald or Marvin Harrison. But do you think they even put them on it? I think you have to, just in case one of them were to hit a slide or something, and they get to like 15, and then you're like, "Hey guys, do we want to go up? Can right. we go up? Um, did one of them get caught wearing a a, a weed bong?" Uh, what? Like How do you wear tonsil? a weed? You mean a gas mask? Yeah, remember the gas mask the, <laughs> when he was toking the gunge? <laughs> uh, Mr. Adam, that. Mr. Adam, with as a new member, he's the new to the ACU crew. Y'all put some legendaries in the chat for uh, Mr. Adam. Let's go. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, let's see here. I saw somebody else say something. Uh, Chris Wright back with another one. He says Chopper Kool Aid. I think Chop Robinson's very much going to be a bust maybe like I'm, i don't know he could be he's a boomer bust he'd be on that boomer bust list he's probably on that boomer bust list kool-aid like, I actually like kool-aid solid i think kool-aid uh when he came back in uh at his pro day because he didn't get to do anything because of that foot at the combine but on his pro day he ended up going a four four seven forty, which was a, a really good he had a one four four ten yard split which is elite that one four four ten yard split was the fastest out of every single corner that's tested so far his only knock is that his vert was only 34 and a half inches but to me he's got big enough size that he can play press i think he's got good eyes when he's playing some like some zone do you stuff. think um do you like think Kool-Aid. his vert could have been you know, dampered a little bit by foot. Yeah, he's got that Jones fracture, so maybe that was uh, hurting him a little bit on Could that. Um, I he like also Kool-Aid, said, man. He also said Geithner verse. 
On this one, I think if Jared Verse is there at 32, that's a no-brainer just off of pure value. Guyton, I think that's where it gets a little iffy. Like Guyton, I think, could possibly be a left tackle if he needed him to be. But do you think he's like a have to take him if he's there kind of guy? I don't either. Look, the more and more and more that I'm digging into film and the more and more and more I'm hearing from a lot of outside sources. Because like I'll talk to tons of people about draft. The more and more and more people I hear talk about Tyler Guyton is a lot of people think that he is very much a guy that needs to sit. He needs to learn. And they don't know necessarily if he can come in and play like great. Um, if you watch some of his reps at the senior bowl, he was getting blown up. It didn't look as good as everybody was making it out to be like, oh, Tyler Guyton dominated at the senior bowl. It wasn't that great. Uh, I know he's 6'8", he's a giant, but I think him and Mims are kind of the same thing. Like, they're a project. And it's like, yeah. do you want to rely on a project? I don't know. Are they worth first-round picks? Yes. But I don't know if they go as high as people think they do. I think they could fall well into the 20s. Yep. Our boy Richie said, just don't pick a running back in the first round. This would be the worst draft ever to pick a running back in the first round because I feel like you could get some really good value at the end you of know the second funny, and the third round. What? If you took Jonathan Brooks, if you took Trey Benson, if you took Jalen Wright, they were they're all going to have a better Chiefs career than probably Clyde. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody hits that level of buzz, do they? Poor yeah, Clyde. I don't know. Clyde just was not a first round pick, and we all know that. Uh, Chief Kelsey says that Beach will probably have around fifteen to eighteen first round grades. What do you think? It's about right. I've got like seventeen first rounders. I feel like uh, the common like sentiment from most NFL scouts and things that anything that we've heard behind the scenes is that there's only about 15 first round picks in this draft. Now, now that being said, it's a deep draft in wide receiver, offensive tackle, a couple other positions, cornerback, but they think that only about 15 guys are worthy of a first round grade. Yeah. I mean, I've got 17 guys that I would feel comfortable picking in the first round. Problem is there's 32 picks. Right. So now you have to just say the, the second half of the draft is reaching, which is why I say that that like 10 through 17, if there's some tackles there, it's going to be a crap show watching people get in and try to get them tackles, man. I think yeah, this is sure. going to be a wild one, dude. There's going to be some fireworks. Uh, what's up, Kato, man? He says my daughter just said she prefers Kool-Aid. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. What color? What's your favorite color Kool-Aid, Mike? Like I haven't drank Kool-Aid since we were children, but. What do you think? You know, always not very popular, but I always like orange flavored things. So I always like the orange Kool-Aid a little bit. My favorite Kool-Aids were probably grape and watermelon. Probably. Now, now the strawberry one, I, strawberry flavored things. I don't like that much. I like Cherry strawberries. Cherry one's probably okay. But like strawberry flavored things like taste like crap to me, but strawberries are delicious. But Look, cherry, fl cherry flavored stuff has right. a tendency to taste like cough medicine or like. Andy bust in like the Kool-Aid man. We should definitely have Kool-Aid on this team. <laughs> that would be a good thing. Uh, Ray Ray says, hey, Mike and Steve, are you still high on Keon Coleman? Absolutely. I think, I honestly think he's being overlooked. Like, I think if there's anyone even close to the top four guys, it's Keon Coleman. Yeah. Keon's still in my top ten. He's still our top ten. He's number nine. Um, I feel like he could be higher than that, man. too. I feel he like he could. could be higher than that. He could, but you you know he when you watch him on film, I mean, come on, he doesn't se Dude. he still doesn't separate. Poor guy, he just doesn't separate. He'll show so much athletic stuff, and then he just it's weird. Uh, but I mean, think about this: when he played at Michigan State, did you know he played basketball for Tom Izzo? Dude, did Keon you know Coleman that? is a monster, and and I no, I did not know that. That's cool. But my thing with Keon Coleman is, is I think he has just as much chance of being a starting X wide receiver in the national football league than the top four guys do. That's how I feel about him. I mean, I don't know if I go that far. I, I do. I, I think I, Marvin Harrison jr. I'll give you maybe Malik neighbors. Malik neighbors is kind of like a, a project in a way, right? Like, aren't we no. just, well, even Brian Thomas Malik neighbors. Is, I, I feel like, that's my thing, though. Like, with the draft, it doesn't matter how good these guys are. We all know that you don't know nothing until they get on the NFL football field. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. But, like, even Brian <clears throat> Thomas I'm just, Jr., like, we talk about Leggett only having one year, right? One year, man. And sucks. I don't think Wish it's a big deal. Too. 
Brian Thomas Jr.'s only had one good year. Right. Chris Wright says, uh, I like Jalen Wright. Um, yeah, I do, actually. I, I think he's our RB3. And uh, I think if he was there in the third round, I wouldn't be mad at that at all. Like, he he's a beast. I think third round is a good spot for Jalen Wright. Adam says that new member is me. The Mr. Adam one? All right, man. Now you're a member of two different... Two different ones? No. <laughs> He's supporting. Doing it the right way, baby. Um, let's see. Gary Holland. He says, Mike and Steve, do the Chiefs draft a cornerback or a safety? I would be probably mind blown if they go the entire draft and don't draft some kind of defensive back. But I do think in this particular draft that there are some guys they can get late. Uh, and that's what Brett Beach likes to do, to be honest. I mean, when he rebuilt our cornerback room, if you take Trent McDuffie out of the picture, everybody else was drafted pretty late. I mean, even Legarius Sneed was a fourth round draft pick, I think, right? Yeah. Josh Williams was a fourth. Chamari Connor was a fourth. So, yeah, I could definitely Ryan see that happening. Third. Gary Holland, for sure. We got a two bomb from Chris Wright. He says, We live streaming from Kentucky for the draft, right? That That's the plan, I think. Uh, I forgot to look at the poll. We talked about it and everyone looked. It's probably like monumentally in favor of yes, I would think. Mm, 76%. Uh, 24% of people don't give a crap, Mike. They're like, we don't want you to do it. I mean, <laughs> I, do you blame them? Eh. They're like, uh, we don't want to look at you. But, dude, I don't know. Sometimes it's fun, though, because me and Steve will sit there during the draft and we try to pick, we try to think of who's going next. And then before the draft, we kind of get together with Pops and kind of all just do a mock and see if that holds up. Good Lord, that's always a disaster. Man, I'm behind. Pick. I'm behind in the chat, man. I just now started seeing where everybody's talking about the best Kool-Aid flavor. Yeah, man. Dude, Grape might be the winner. I might have been on to something with the Grape. Even Rokato's daughter said Grape, baby. I don't like Grape-flavored things, though, a lot. Do, no, what, whatever. Me, sometimes... like some, it's, I feel like it's one of the most underrated things, because if you had like an ice-cold like Welch's Grape Soda, it tastes amazing. But you just never think about it or get one. See, I prefer orange. Like I would prefer like a sun kissed. That's 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 plain Jane, man. That's like uh you know, that's like the unsalted what's, French fries. What's um what's the chat's verdict on um big red? Is big red a drink that people still drink these days? Big red's delicious. What does big R red taste like? Rokato, tell her we said happy birthday. Oh, happy yeah. birthday. Happy Hope birthday. You're, I hope oh. you're having an awesome day. Hope you're having an awesome how day. How old? Give me your name and tell me how old she is. Your dad's a legend, by the way. Just Legendary. remember that. Always listen to him. Man, yeah. Dude, you and Ray Ray need to get together and just drink some tang. Y'all can have a little orange party. A little pooty tang. Remember that? <laughs> Chris Rock? Pooty tang. Is that what that was? Yeah, pretty sure, man. <laughs> Chief Kelsey says Veach jumped when they drafted McDuffie. He said they had like 16 to 18 first round grades and when McDuffie fell to the 20s, Veach jumped. I think that's the case. I think it's the case in any draft. I think it's in this one. I feel like everyone's just dead set. You have to get a wide receiver or a tackle in the first round. But I think if somebody falls on his board, it doesn't matter what position they play. He's going to go get them. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, I agree, man. I, I think that you've got your guys. And if it's going to fall in range for you to strike, then you do it, right? Otherwise, I just don't – you're not going to say, hey, we've only got 10 guys in the draft, and then say, well, we got to get to the top 10. Like, you just feasibly can't do that. But Right. Uh, Chiefer says that 24% of the people can suck it because they don't want us to live stream the draft. Well, that's – you know, I agree with you, Chiefer. I think I have something for him. For the thousands here in attendance tonight and for the millions watching home on TV. Oh, let's get ready to suck it! <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I That's guess we're. I, I, think about it. I guess that officially means that we're gonna live stream this draft, brother. I mean, I kind of feel like we should. I, I just feel like uh, I feel like it's time. Melody is fifteen today, Mike. He answered our question. So happy birthday, Melody! Oh yeah. Hope you have an awesome 15th birthday. My daughter just turned 15 in February, so. Man, it's Feliz a... Feliz Navidad. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. Look. Melody. 
we have to work on two things here. What's up? You got to quit singing Feliz Navidad to people on their birthday. And that's what Doc does. And in the I middle. Just, I love look, Doc, so I just love it. You have this tendency to rock in your chair when you're singing, but you're hearing the creak of the chair. You're messing your songs up. So you got to be steel. Stop. Oh, it's when I lean forward to, yeah. to hit the thing. No, you got to be still, man. I'm just going to have to like be like this. <laughs> hey, have a good night, Richie. Thanks for hanging out with us, even though we're on one today. It's just a fun time right now. Chris Wright says there's only 101 likes. Hit the like button like it's a gas Look, pedal, baby. That's complete. And you're and you're Rasheed Rice, and you're hitting the gas. Was it that's too com- soon? It's complete too BS. Soon. I only have 101 likes. Get it together. <laughs> uh, Kato, I don't I don't think we lost Rice. No, like. Could it come up and more things come out or, or rice try to hide something or something like kind of like cream hunt did? Sure. I mean, there's always that possibility, but I think if we, like if everything is out there uh, in the universe, everybody knows everything that's going on. He's been completely transparent with Clark hunt and Andy Reed and everybody else. I think he's fine. I think uh, he'll take a couple slaps on the wrist. He'll have to pay a bunch of restitution bills and I think that he will play football after a couple of games and everything will go back to normal. He's got to stay out of trouble, though. Yeah. Can we just draft Brendan Rice? What then, made you bring that up? And then draft Brandon Bean. And that way in the preseason, we can have some rice and beans. Just so much preseason food. <laughs> we do love beans. Mexican food. That's what I'm saying. Uh, bean to rice. Bean to rice. But they're not Touchdown. throwing it to each other. Bean will. He's a quarterback. Bean to rice. Bean. Rice. Touchdown to bean. Bean. Who knows? Maybe we're running bootlegs and, and flea flickers. and You lost uh, me. The old Statue of Liberty play. You lost me. Iron Price says, grab some rocking shades. Suck it. <laughs> Appreciate the five bomb, shades. Iron Price. I don't know. Maybe we, he wants us to wear shades. Oh. Somebody stole my sunglasses. I'll be danged. If somebody comes in here and steals oh, my sunglasses, oh, bro. Oh, hey, I feel it down in my plums. Oh, a bluish hue. Let's do it. Man, these are bright. This light up here and these yellow glasses, oof. we'll see about it. If I don't get a migraine in the next five minutes, we'll be, uh, we'll be doing all right. Jeremy Bloss in the house. He says, thinking of Rice and Hunt's idiocy, it makes me glad Kelsey got his out and out of the way in college. Did he, though? I feel like Kelsey's been a very fortunate guy for not getting busted with something oh along the way. Oh, my God. <laughs> Kelsey's wild, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I agree to a certain extent. I feel like, like yeah, you can, that's the thing. You, you can still live your life. You can still be a young guy and... And have your fun, but you just have to be smart about how you do it. You have to plan ahead. You can't be doing dumb stuff. Like, have your fun. I get it. You're young. Go do stuff. Everyone does it. But you can't be an idiot. Don't be a slap nuts about it. Yeah, don't be a don't be a nut slapper. Don't be a nut slapper. Hey, uh, where did that go? Mean Street says Andy will come up with the burrito play if you have rice and beans. Oh, yes. Is there anybody named Corn? No. <laughs> Maybe you just play Corn as the intro music as Bean and Rice emerge from the tunnel. Who's Bean again? Holding Brandon Bean from K- from Kansas. They draft him and they uh, they get him as a UDFA. They hold hands <laughs> with 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 Rice and they run out to I corn. think you confused the hell out of me a minute ago because you said Brandon Rice and I thought you were talking about Brandon Rice me too I said let's draft him too so all of our receivers are named Rice <laughs> okay okay that's why I was so lost I was like what are we talking about here Mike that's funny man slow down man my old man brain's kicking in oh yeah Kelsey just got caught at Coachella Perry says he better not be at Coachella enjoying some music don't that's against, do it. That's against the rules, son. Ray Ray says, Mike and Steve, how about Harold Perkins Jr., linebacker? Does he make your big board? Mike, let's talk about our linebacker big board. What do we got? Do you have it pulled uh, up? No, Harold per- Perkins isn't on our board. Did he even come out? I don't even think he come out. Did he declare? I don't know if he declared. Harold? Uh, our, 
Harold Perkins. He's an inside <laughs> linebacker anyway, I'm pretty sure. So I don't think he would. I mean, you'd have to get rid of old, you know, Nick Bowden. Oh, slick Nick. Uh, yeah, our big board at linebacker, man, we still got Edger and Cooper's our number one. And I, and I feel solid with that, man. Don't you? I do. The only other one that re- you can really even say is Peyton Wilson, probably. Yeah, Peyton Wilson's got a shot. But with his injury history, I feel and a little And he's a little older. He's a little older. I think Edger and Cooper's right. I think that's a, a good yeah. number one on the board. And then, of course, just around at our top five, you know, we got Junior Colson out of Michigan. We got Jeremiah Trotter Jr. at four. And we got Cedric Gray out of UNC. But coming up on his tail, baby, Bookie Watson out of Mississippi State. I love some Bookie Watson. When right. you watch him play, he's nasty. nasty. Robert Robert says move on from Rice and find a deep threat. Uh, I don't. We we did find a deep threat. Well, I mean, we signed Hollywood Brown. I think he'll be a fine deep threat. Uh, and moving on from Rice, I feel like is uh, prematurely. Um, yeah, that's just a little much. Yeah, you know, it's like American Pie. You, you don't want to. You don't want to blow it too soon. And I feel like that's exactly what would be happening if you just Ooh, go out there cutting rice. I thought you were going to say, don't eat the pie. <laughs> don't eat the pie. What's up, baby? Five bomb from old Christopher Wright, our The boy. legend. He says, members only draft. <laughs> well, we, we that's another Give thing I wanted to mention draft. tonight. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, we've been so busy this month. We haven't got to do our members only for April yet. So that's going to be coming up this week, actually. And then, of course, we'll try to get back to the first Thursday of every month. But we still have a members only to do this month. And oh, yeah. that'll be coming up this week. Uh, we'll try to give you guys a heads up on when that is. But a members-only draft would be pretty fun, I do think. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. We should maybe do a uh, – I don't even know what I was going to say. I'm on one today, bro. I can't think. Got that old man brain going, too. A little bit. It's okay. I got to take these off. I can't do it no more. It would be kind of fun. But the bad thing about members-only – is if you did a members only draft, you're very much secluding about ninety nine point nine 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 percent of YouTube. I think we should have a members only um, mock draft where we all can where get the together. Do it. Yeah, well, like where the members will consensus, take a consensus of each pick, and then we'll see how close it is to the Chiefs' actual draft. For every pick they get right, we give away a prize. Yeah, that's that's kind of what he was saying, right? Let's do that. That'd be fun. Oh, let's do it. Okay, whatever. That's cool. Chiefer says Nightbot hates members only. <laughs> he can't get in. Yeah. Can somebody give that guy a membership so he can help us pick? <laughs> it's so why much easier. Why won't they ever give Nightbot one of the gifted memberships? See, Sam Lofton likes that idea. I think a members only little like uh, consensus draft prediction would be fun. I think we should do it. Like you mean like a like a consensus only like a round one mock? Or are you talking about like did you just pick all Chiefs picks? Just the Chiefs picks, not everybody else. But you may miss. That's fine, but we there's no way we're gonna sit there and pick the entire draft, Mike. The first what are you round high. But people could at least get the first few picks, and then you. We're not worried about. We're not. No, that's crazy because that's too easy too. You're gonna give away a prize to someone that says Caleb Williams is going number one. What are you crazy? That's an easy one. You get a sticker. (laughs) Yeah, you get a little smiley face sticker that you used to get at Walmart. We'll send. We'll send you one of those. Yeah, you get something. (laughs) Man, you so you so okay over there? I'm good. Gary says, Mike and Steve, top three draft picks. Wait, are these like my guys? Like, who's our my guys? Who's our favorites? Steve, who's your favorites in this draft? You got any favorites? Uh, I think Xavier Legat would be one of your favorites. If we're going my guys, he's saying top three draft picks. I, I don't know what he means by that exactly. But for the Chiefs, I guess, let's let's do that. Who's the top three people that you hope the Chiefs get in the first round? Let's name three people that the Chiefs could draft realistically in the first round that you would be happy with or okay. That I would with. love. Uh, I'll say. Do you want to go one receiver, one tackle, and then one random position just to make it fun? Sure. Instead of just saying three receivers. Okay, I would be. Uh, I'd be happy with reaching, which I don't think is a reach, but a lot of people do. Uh, Xavier Leggett, he's on my list. Okay. Um. 
That would be your wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the tackle to me, if you're going to get one at that juncture and probably who's available, I'd be okay if they reached a little bit on Kingsley Suamatea. I'd be okay with that. Okay. Um, and then for random position, um, I would probably say Johnny Newton or someone like that if they fail. Take them. Okay. I'll start. Wide receiver, you know who I'm going to say. Ricky Persall, the greatest route the running greatest. wide receiver. The greatest besides Lyde McConkey. So here's my thing. The have, greatest. You see, have you ever just went and looked at Ricky Persall's like Instagram? He's a model. He looks like a complete douchebag. So does Travis Kelsey. It's worked out pretty well for us. That's what I'm saying, um, though. Like He looks like somebody you definitely wouldn't want to hang out with. Ricky Persall. Want Ricky Persall at 32. I don't care if it's a little bit of a reach. I don't think it's that much of a reach. I actually have him as a higher grade than Xavier Worthy. Yeah. Uh, number two, tackle. You said Kingsley. I'm going to say Patrick Paul. I think 32 is too rich on him, but there's just something there. He he knows karate, okay? He's got decent hands, but they still need to get better. Uh, his footwork's okay. It can get coached up, but he's just a massive mammoth human. So I would like that. And then let's go um, for pick number three. Let me see. Let's go defense. Love pretty Ricky Persall, baby. Uh, is that defense? really his nickname? Because if it's not, that's what it should be if the Chiefs draft him. He's, in, like, from here on out, pretty Ricky. Right. He has to be. Defense, I'm going to say um, Darius Robinson, Missouri. Yeah, I like that pick. I like that pick a lot. I think Darius Steve Robinson o. could be a a, a, a piece. And, and, again, Steve Felix, you know, if he don't work out. Uh, Steven says, good to Mike, see you. Steve-O's in the house. What's up, steve -O? What's going on, my man? So yeah. Steve Have they put out the, uh, it has, was it their name? Chateau, the milk company. Is that their name? Yeah. Oh, they've they, got the, the 49ers tiers. Is it out now? It's out. We got to get some of get, that, man. I need, I need to get my hands on some of that. I found on their website, they will like deliver it to your door, but you have to live in KC. Like they won't ship it outside of the. Why? Wah, wah. Well, won't they do I it? I need to make a trip to KC, man. I'm going to pick a weekend and just go. Yeah, you could have went to the parade with me and Pops, but you decided to take a vacation yeah. during the Super Bowl. That was a good time. Uh, I'll tell you, I really want to go eat some barbecue, man. I, I woke up today craving Q39, like, so bad. Yeah, yeah, sure. Did you eat it? Y'all didn't even go to Q39, though. Y'all nah. wasted it. We, uh, we had... Uh, Jack stack. Jack, Jackie, Jackie and then Jackie on the way home, game. we stopped in Blue Springs at the uh, uh, at Zarda's and ate at Zarda, uh, the one that we did the chew with the crew. Really, you went back to chew with the crew? Was there yeah, we hit it on the way out. You know, <laughs> we were like uh, brushing ourselves off a little bit from the chaos of the end of the parade and getting it together, right. and we're like, let's just go ahead and head home, and uh, we'll hit we'll hit that Blue Springs Zarda. Love it, man. So that's kind of how that went. Hey, you know, Pretty Ricky, Ray Ray says Pretty Ricky actually goes into. PP on the PP. He's in. Oh, he is. He is He's part a person. Of PP on He's PP. a little PP. Hey, if we get a little PP in the wide receiver room, I'm I'm down for it. I like Ricky Persall, man. And by the way, I do like we're, him. We're coming out with a video tomorrow morning. It's on a Sunday. We're just gonna preface this. We don't do videos on Sunday, but I've got a video coming out tomorrow morning, and I think I put it out kind of early in case you guys want to get up, go to church, whatever you're doing. Maybe you just want to get up and have dinner and brunch with the fam. Video tomorrow. NFL.com did a mock draft, and they actually mock draft pretty Ricky Persall to the Chiefs. And I broke it down, and I went in depth about my favorite wide receiver in the draft. I think I had a lot of good info in there, Steve, didn't I? I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. Daggone, you edited it. <laughs> you better <laughs> went in and took out all my bad stuff. <laughs> Look, bro, if you did that bad in the middle, I don't know about it. Oh, jeez Louise. I don't hey, watch it. Y'all might want to watch it just to see if Mike screwed up in the middle of the thing. I know sometimes I'll turn, I'll click you know, record. You know what my favorite thing is? Is when, I, like, because I edit all the videos. And I like when Mike records a video by himself and he's like, hey, man, I recorded a video. If you can edit it and, and, and post it. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then I'll go to edit it and, like, like Mike will screw up the beginning like 85 times. And then he'll be like, I'm a freaking idiot, Steve. I'm sorry. 
I know you're watching this, and I'm just an idiot. <laughs> I always I laugh so hard. I'm like tongue tied. I'll be like, "Welcome back to the podcast." Whoa. And then I say, "Dude, I'm so stupid. Why do I keep messing this up, dude?" What if you What if you got mad and like got really red in the face, like punched yourself in the face? <laughs> idiot. Yeah. Stevie Bird, delete this. <laughs> Chief Kelsey says I'd meet up for some Q or Jack Stack if y'all come to KC. Heck yeah, Let's do man. it. Let's do next, it, Chief Kelsey. Next time we're there, man. Anytime we ever come to KC, I'm just going to throw out where I'm about to go eat and anybody in the area just join me. And you know what? Yeah, if it yeah. makes Q39 mad, whatever. We'll just get a, you know, if you're not there by the time I get the table and I can't get you to the table, I'm sorry. You know, but I appreciate it. Chris Wright was talking about how he has, uh, where did it go? I lost it. He had Jack Stack and Gates barbecue sauce in the fridge. I had like a little collection going. So my favorite sauces. Uh, it's funny because I, I'm not saying these are my favorite restaurants or my favorite barbecue from Kansas City, but I think my favorite sauce out of all of them Art is Zarda good. Ghost. Oh, Zarda Ghost is good. The Zarda Ghost. I love the spicy sauce. It's so good. And then um, there was the one that uh, from Cowtown. Is that their name? Night Cowtown of the Living Sauce. A good one, man. Night of the Living Sauce. That one's awesome. I had that in the collection. I had a bunch of them in my fridge too, Chris, right? I had an Arthur Bryant's Bold and Spicy. I had Gates. I had uh, quite a few of them. Barbecue sauce connoisseur. Yeah, man. Hey, I picked one up at Walmart the other day. And it says it's from KC. Does anybody know? That, look, I'm going to throw up the... Uh, I'm going to find it. Actually, I'll just tell you the name. If you need to see the bottle, I'll find it for you. It's called... um. Steve, you may have seen it too because they sell it at our Walmart. Blues Hog. You ever heard of that one? You made me get like a little bottle to try it, and it was actually pretty good. It yeah. is freaking good, dude. And it says something about being from Missouri, but I don't think it's necessarily Kansas City. But if anybody's heard about Blues Hog, what's the story with them? Are they like just like pit guys that go out and try to like win comps or something? That's also that's pretty good, though. I ain't gonna lie. Annetta, that's what we're gonna do. Next time we're in Kansas City, we'll go ahead and throw it out there. We'll just we'll have a we'll have a little meet up again. I think that'll be fun. Yeah, we we were talking about maybe doing the whole Chew of the Crew thing again this year, which we still could, but that's always going to be, when, when's camp? Like July, early August. It's usually early August. That's when we usually will get down there, but we'll see. Space says, fun. I love Smokehouse and Rosedale. I've never, I've, I've wanted to try Rosedale because I have heard mixed reviews on it, but I've heard really good stuff, so I wanted to give it a shot. Uh, I don't know about Smokehouse, though. I've never, never even really heard much about that one, I don't think. Not heard of that one either, but Rosedale, every time we go, they're closed. Yeah, I know there's another they one. they close on um, Mondays, I think? Is that when they're closed? Because they're always closed when I'm there. I had someone suggesting a place. Uh, I think it's the guy that uh, maybe started Char Bar, but it's called Chef Jay's Barbecue. Somebody was telling me that was pretty good. I don't know if any of you guys can uh, elaborate on that one for me. That'd be nice. Oh yeah. Blues oh yeah. Hog. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I really enjoyed. We went to Pigwich last time we went to camp. Pigwich was good. And uh, the sandwich I got was absolutely amazing. I thought that yeah, was really Pigwich good. Pigwich was pretty good. We did man. get a parking ticket while Dude, we were that, eating Pigwich. That was the most expensive Pigwich sandwich. <laughs> But it was good, though. Why did we get a parking ticket? I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, they didn't have the street labeled properly. The sign was crazy. Like, it was definitely set up for you to get a parking ticket. <laughs> yeah, so the sign was The best thing about it was the is there was no one there. Like, we were the only car, and, like, no one else was in the vicinity of this place. And we get back, and we have a parking ticket. It's like there was somebody with binoculars waiting, like, dare you idiots to park somewhere. I'm going to get you. Hey, no, take that back. There was a van, like three parking spots up in front of us. Zero parking ticket on that one. They were exempt from parking tickets. I guess so. The white van clan <laughs> out here. I don't that's know. Probably, that's, it was probably the guy probably that gave the, you the parking ticket. I was going to say, it was probably the parking ticket <laughs> guy, that idiot. So don't you park behind me, son. I'm going to write you up, get you a ticket here. <laughs> Sam, are you okay, brother? He's, he's on one tonight. What Sam do? He says so much for the Chiefs talk. He said he's horned up. Sam, I'm sorry, bro. Like you can't. Like, geez, Louise. Can I just breathe for a minute? He's, look, he's horny. Like, look, he's horned up, <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to eat. Yeah, he's fine with it. We all want to eat, and we can't think about Chiefs <laughs> on an empty barbecued stomach. But look, I'll tell you. Let's get back to the to the to the 
talk. To the talk? Let's get back what to kind the of talk are we having? A taco. That would be pretty good. Uh, dude, I want to tell you, let's do more my guys. You got any more my guys in this draft? Tell somebody that some somebody something they don't know about. Well, I mean, I think a lot of my guys I've already thrown out there. I think a lot of people know I like Xavier Leggett. Um, I like, uh, I do like, I think I would almost call him a my guy just because I think the value's there and people are letting it drop too far. And that's uh, Burton. I do like him. Um, Gosh. Uh, uh, Joshua Cephas. Uh, he's a my guy. Steve, Kamala he's Haddon. like all the dudes that have um, like questionable histories. Joshua Cephas, Kamal Haddon. <laughs> Uh, let me think. There's some other my guys. You can go ahead with some of yours, I think. Um, Don't, why are you just trying to get us back in trouble again with all your guys? Well, you know. Um, let me think. We all know I love Persall. Uh, let me think of another wide receiver that I kind of like. Um, I like Bub Means from Pittsburgh. Six Bub one two Means. twelve. He can flat out fly. And you know what else? I don't have his contested catch numbers They're what do you really think what do you what, what would we nickname bub means like bub that means is his bu- nickname bub, bub means business yeah oh biz <laughs> uh, his name his real name's jared but they call him bub i don't know how they got we that. done made ozark killbilly hungry he said he's got to go to the kitchen he'll be back i know man but yeah uh, uh chris wright uh, says javon baker's a my guy i do like javon baker but his drops scare me and i think it's probably a little bit of ptsd Hey, I still think he can get through them. Look, think about it. Rasheed Rice was an 8% drop guy, and Javon Baker's a 10. So, I mean, is it really that much difference? And and we did see some drops early from Rasheed Rice, but when it counted, I, I do like Javon Baker because he runs pretty sharp routes. Like, there's just a lot to like about Javon Baker. I feel Baker. like I really there's do. a pretty good upside with Javon Baker. I really do. But it, it, something about him scares me, and I don't know what. It, it, it might be unwarranted. But it's just there. Right. I literally just wrote up Javon Baker the other day. I went through and watched a lot of his film, wrote up <laughs> some of his stuff. Um, I wrote down this. I said, he can jump out of the building first and foremost. He's a deep vertical threat. He got 15 catches of over, I want to say, 25 plus yards. So he can vertically be awesome. He's a good contested catch guy. A good contested catch guy with nine catches, nine contested catches, fifty six point three percent, thirty catches of fifteen plus yards. He runs sharp routes. He positions his body well at the contested catch point. He's very versatile inside and outside, which Andy likes. He can play both inside slot, outside on the boundary. Great deep ball tracking skills. His cons is he likes to drop passes, and when he works himself back to the quarterback, which is perfect for Patrick Mahomes, he tends to drop the pass. And then I said he's good at a lot of things, but just not great at any particular thing. And uh, I give him a comp, Steve. And my comp for him, I have two comps. His low comp is Jalen Tolbert. You remember him out of last year's draft? I liked the Jalen Tolbert. You did. I seen some Jalen Tolbert. You know his I feel high like, comp. Uh, is. I feel like Dallas isn't utilizing that guy correctly. Right. His high comp for me, and I think he could get to this. It, I mean, if he gets to this, it would be amazing. But you always got to give somebody like an out of bounds comp, right? Keenan Allen. I see a little Keenan Allen in him. The way he plays. That'd be so, nasty. Jalen Tobert slash Keenan Allen is my comp for Javon. I hate Baker. Keenan I, Allen, I but he's a he's a damn good football player. <laughs> uh, Robert uh, says he's on vacation. He's enjoying the banner. Well, hey, what what kind of vacation are we on here? I want to be on vacation. Look, everybody's Robert, taking you, everybody's taking vacations, but me, I don't Robert, get one. You banter about your vacation. Let me read it and live vicariously through you. I hope you're at a beach or like I don't know where you're at, and I don't really care, just as long as it's not at home. Lego says Rice is probably getting three to four games suspension. I did see, I think Gary Holland asked what, how many we, games we thought he'd get suspended. I'm going to stand on two at the moment. Purely off of, I think a lot of these charges are going to get dropped, and Alvin Kamara literally beat a guy well, almost to death. Steve, we just got breaking news. Breaking news for Rasheed Rice. Here it comes. Rice faces the death penalty in Texas. Oh, no. No deaths or serious injuries, but Chief fans are very dramatic. Um, <laughs> breaking news right now. Where did you find that? That's insane. It just come up on my on the screen. <laughs> Can you believe it? Like, you got an alert? A, like, an alert. It's insane, bro. 
Dude, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I think he's probably going to be suspended until he's like 32. <laughs> no, legitimately, I, I'm, I'm going to stick I'm with gonna, two games. I'm going to go with two. Could but, it be more? Yes. But yeah, I'm going I think with they two. will hit him with more games. But he, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and I'm just going to say six. Let's say six. Uh, oh, many of you got six games and he didn't even try to fight it. Do you he think he? Do you think they could suspend him like six games? He could appeal and it go down to two or four. He, he could, but I think uh, that might um, be how it goes. Think about it. Um, again, in the middle of San Jose on a street corner in front of a uh, a restaurant, Charles Omenihu gets accused of smacking his girlfriend in the street. Who again? Charles Omenihu. Uh Again, cops show up. She denies all. She don't even want a band aid. She don't even have a scratch on her. And then two weeks later, they're in a car together, even though they had a restraining order against each other. So let's. We don't know. But still, at the end of the day, they still, with all that going on, they give him six games. That was even because they made a point to like crack down on domestic violence. This does not fall into that domestic violence category, and that's the same reason they gave for Charles or. Um, Charles Lomenihu getting six games and Alvin Kamara getting two because it was the oh, domestic yeah, violence. Oh, said it wasn't domestic violence. Yeah. Do you think I'm going to stand on two for now. Okay, but look, if the, if the NFL comes out and they're like, look, we're giving him eight games, he's going to miss half the season because we've got to put a stop to young guys doing this, and for she Rice has to be the guy that takes the fall to prevent these kids from killing themselves or other people by doing reckless stuff like this, would you be fine for it? Like, if he's got to be the martyr for the thing? I think I'd I, I be think, a little irritated, but I wouldn't be that. I would not be irritated. He gets what he gets. I, I think he gets what he gets. I, if they give him eight games, I'm, I'm going to be like, man, that sucks. But hey, you, right. you deserve it. Right. I, but I, but I, I, what he gets, but. like I said, I'm going to stand on two. I think that's where I'm at for now, unless something else comes out. Chris Wright uh, ask about Luke McCaffrey, Mike. Is he Lucky. somebody that you think could be like a little diamond in the rough? Uh, he's a guy that on day three, he's a day three guy, in my opinion. He's our number 23 ranked wide receiver. And that's not saying nothing bad about Luke McCaffrey. That's just saying how deep this class is. A lot of good wide receivers in this. It's draft, insane. Sure. Um, he did pretty well in his uh, his his testing. He ran a 4-4-6. He had a 1-5-2-10 yard split, 36-inch vertical. And he actually was 60% on contested balls. Uh, the thing about The thing about Luke McCaffrey is that Wide receiver is just not the position he grew up playing. Like, he played a little bit in high school, but he also played quarterback in high school. Uh, he went to Nebraska for three years and played quarterback. And then when he transferred to Rice, he played wide receiver. So, he can catch the ball, and he's got good football IQ. He's just not, like, he's not a guy that is going to be a vertical threat in this league. I just, I don't think he's explosive enough and fast enough. And so, I think he's going to be, like, a big slot wide receiver. And I think his his release technique off the line is not very good. I think he can get jammed up. And I think that his speed really does. I don't think he's athletic enough to just be like that guy that you're just like, hey, go get it. Like to me, he's kind of in the category like a Justin Watson. That's where like I, if, if Luke McCaffrey succeeds, he's going to feel like a, a Justin Watson, in my opinion. What do you think? Uh, so you think that's like his high end? Um. I comped him to a less polished Greg Jennings. You remember Greg Jennings? You think he like, could be like something like a, something like an Edelman or something where it's like a guy you didn't think was going to do much, but he ended up having like a really good career? No, because his size is a little weird. You're 6'2", 208. Like, um, no, he's 6'2", 198. So he's going to... I don't. He's going to have to play on the outside, but I just don't think he's got the deep speed to create that kind of stuff. So his, he's going to be a short to intermediate guy. And again, it, I don't know how to explain it. I guess with a one, five, two, 10 yard split, he could be a productive slot, but he's just totally different than like an Edelman. You know what I mean? Like Edelman's going to be like your, your Roman Wilson, right? Like the little guy that you can put in the slot. Roman Wilson, I think is a, a, a guy people sleeping on. I do. I feel yeah. like Roman Wilson could definitely go high second round and everybody be like, why? And then it's like, dude, Roman I just feel Wilson's like he's getting overlooked. Some, he's picking up some steam. He's he getting really overlooked, is. man, because he, he's an absolute beast, I think. I've seen a lot of people comping him. They're like, why would y'all want to get another Sky Moore? He's not like Sky Moore. He's worse. No, I'm joking. No, <laughs> he's he, totally different than Sky Moore. Sky Moore made his living by getting him the ball in space and getting and breaking. Sky Moore is, if, if you like Malachi Corley, 
Yeah. It's the same same deal. Malachi Corley is going to be Scott Moore. He even drops the ball like Scott Moore. Which by the Scott way, Scott don't even Moore, drop a lot. Yeah, people always say Scott drops, and he's got he had two drops last year. <laughs> For some reason, Patrick Mahomes and him are never on the same page. That's, That's the what problem. It is. Uh, Patrick Mahomes throwing Scott Moore the ball. Remember, we found the stat. It was something like he only threw threw him a catchable ball thirty three percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, there's something they were a little off, and it could have been Sky Moore's fault. I don't know. I'm glad but, they're working out in Texas together because they need as much work as they can get. Together. I did see uh, Kadarius Tony was actually down there working. I love it. I think he yeah. needs that. I even posted it on uh, Twitter. I re- retweeted it and I said he needs it. Like I, I really honestly believe that Kadarius Tony has the ability to be a good football player. He needs to get his focus on it. He needs to, to get all the outside stuff out and really yeah. focus on his game. But I, I don't think that uh, Kadarius Tony is a guy that drops balls. And last year, I think it happened and he got the yips. Like it got in his head. He, he became a golfer who got the shanks a little bit, right? Yeah, dude. I think, I think if he can just get his head right and get past that and get it out of his head, kind of like he needs to work and focus, but he needs to let that stuff go. Like, right. and, and like, I think that he'll be fine. I just think there's so much that Kadarius Tony could do in this league that he hasn't done. Like there's this massive ceiling and it's just like, I, I feel like he, he can definitely reach it. It's just, right. he's got to focus. Yeah. The more and more that I keep looking at the way this season may turn out and, um, you kind of look at like receiver, are the chiefs going to take one early? Or are they not? If the chiefs pass up a wide receiver in round one, and they don't take one in round two. So if we get through two rounds, Chiefs Kingdom's heads are going to explode if we don't take a receiver in the first two rounds. Oh, yeah, and there's a possibility, guys. Go ahead and brace yourselves. That could very very right. well happen. Well, and the reason yep. is because the more and more and more I watch and you realize this new kickoff rule, and there is one kick returner, punt returner, who is a massive, uh, he's just amazing talent at kickoff, punt return. We don't need that. We have the rugby guy. Right. But <laughs> we got two round five picks, and it would not surprise me if they overlook a wide receiver early if they just don't Anthony wait on Gold. Anthony Gold. Hmm. Yeah. He just he scores elite in all three quickness categories. A four three nine, a one four nine ten yard split. That is the fastest by He far. is a beast. I'm not gonna lie. He he's right. very undersized, but he is a beast. Right. And so they could take that. But to me, <clears throat> I feel like if you leave this entire wide receiver class with just Anthony Gold, you have failed. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. I don't They've want to call do Brett more. Beach a failure, but if you're not going to address the wide receiver class with this class, except for, for Anthony Gold in round five, I would be irate. Yeah, I agree. I think, I, I think I'd be a little pissed off too. I do. But yeah, Anthony Gold is, is a guy, the more I watch him, I'm like, my I God, feel like, I think uh, Brett Beach is going to love him. Well, my thing is, is I feel like if the Chiefs get Anthony Gold or even Joshua Cephas, I'd be completely pumped. But they have to get someone first. They have to be the double dip on wide receiver. It can't be the only one. Right. I think you got to get somebody a little different. Um, to answer Gary's question, he just said, Mike and Steve, do you see the Chiefs draft to Lad McConkie? Would love if you, it. If you took Lad McConkie at 32 and then took one of your round fives and got Anthony Gold, I think that's a win. Because you got a guy yeah. that's going to play immediately everywhere with yeah. Lad McConkie. And then you've got a guy like Anthony Gold that can now come in and learn the offense. And maybe if Sky or whatever does not pan out and Kadarius Tony can't get it together this year and you've got to cut them next year, there you go. So you've got to Right. Guy. Well, you know, we always talk about receivers at the end of the first round. Like, there's a lot there, a lot that could be there. There's a lot of really good receivers in this draft. I honestly think that in that at that point in the draft, there's one guy on that list that I literally feel completely 100% safe with drafting. Like, I feel like there's not much of a risk. And that's Lad McConkey. Like, if you want to be safe, you can go with Lad. If you want to, if you want to be risky, get Xavier Leggett, get whoever. But if you want to be safe and you want to know you got a guy that's going to come in, contribute from day one, run good routes, be smart, you take Lad. That's just my yeah. opinion. I think there's three guys that fit that mold, and Lad McConkey's one. Ricky Persall's my other one, and I think if you want another dude that I think is solid, he can play. And you can rely on him to throw the ball, catch the ball, move the chains. Jalen Polk out of Washington. He's a kid I'm very comfortable with. He's a bigger X guy. Will the Chiefs take that? I don't know. The Chiefs don't routinely like to take the big six, two, six, three guys. We just don't. Like people beg for it, man. And what yeah. does Veach do? 
Interviews Ladd McConkey. Interviews Xavier Worthy. Interviews Anthony Gold. He's just interviewing these. That's just what they like, man. And that, that's just all there you is think to Brent it. Brent Veach does it because he tries to find guys that are shorter than he is so he can intimidate them. He's Brent Veach like, is a wee little man, isn't he? Yeah, that's why he's always trying to get rid of He's like, look, I drafted a guy that's shorter than me, honey. He puffs his chest out all the time. Yeah, he tells his wife, he's like, I'm not that little. We just took a first round <laughs> draft pick that's shorter than me, babe. So um, Jesse says that he could see us taking Jalen McMillan. Mike, a lot of people talk about Jalen McMillan. They also talk about Malik Washington. Tell us about yeah. those two guys, and what what do you think? Like, where if the Chiefs did take McMillan or Malik Washington, where would you be comfortable taking them? Right, Jalen Mill, Jalen McMillan. I'll start with him. He is starting to gain some traction. He's starting to be talked about. Look, he was a third option in Washington. They had Romo Dunze. Yeah. They had Jalen Polk. Uh, yeah, Jalen Polk, but but they wanted to get the ball to Jalen McMillan. Uh, I think they actually let me find the exact stat on that. Sixty um, ninth percentile in routes ran, which means he ran sixty nine percent of the routes in that offense on passing downs. They tried to get him the ball. They really did. They wanted to. Here's the thing about him. He graded out a 61.5 versus man to man coverage. He's not a guy that's going to beat you with athleticism. And size. He doesn't separate like that. He's 6'1", 197, but his size and speed combination just isn't there. He's a guy that's not a deep threat. He's going to beat you with football IQ. He's going to beat you by sitting down in zones. Uh, he knows how to tempo his routes, which means he won't just, like, you know, see where you got to go and go as fast as he can. Like, he's going to set up the DB. He's going to do what he does. He does everything with his mind, his, his stuff. He's not super physical. He don't have a lot of play strength. I mean... Again, if, if the breeze blows too hard, you're knocking him off his route. Uh, he's a very average athlete. Uh, he's not going to break a ton of tackles. He's not going to be a threat as a vertical guy. He's just not going to do it. If you're drafting him to be vertical, you're just you're, you're going to miss. He had zero contested catches. Didn't even get the opportunity because they didn't throw him balls like that. Like, he's going to work the intermediate part of the field. I comped him to Tom Brady's one of his favorite wide receivers back in college, Ty Streets. You remember Ty Streets? He reminded me of Ty Streets. Ty Streets went to the NFL and people thought he was going to be good. He ended up getting 3,000 yards, 14 touchdowns in his entire career. So Jalen McMillan, not saying he's going to suck, but I just think you have to limit what you think you can get with him. If you want an intermediate guy that's just smart and can get open, there you go. If you want a super athletic guy, Jalen McMillan ain't it. And the Chiefs don't usually draft guys unless they're super athletic, right? I have no idea what you said because I think Perry is just absolutely screwing with me right now. Who? Perry. What are you talking about with Perry? He says his lad the safest wide receiver to take in this draft. I I, th I think he's messing with me. Why? Cause I nothing. Cause you just said uh, it. I think he he said it at the same time you were doing it though. Okay. Okay. I hope. I hope so. Right. Hey. Well, here's the thing. You 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 talked all about Jalen McMillan. I mentioned another guy too, Malik Washington. What Malik do you think Washington. about him? Yeah. yeah, he's a he's a smaller guy, but he produces. He I think he's like five eight, one ninety ish. Uh, he's decently quick. He ran a four four seven, a one five three ten yard split, a forty two and a half inch vertical. He's very athletic, and for that size, he don't drop the ball. He had a two percent drop rate, and his contested catch rate was through the roof. It was sixty five percent. He had a higher con contested catch rate than almost, I think he was like the fourth highest contested catch. He's 5'8". So he de Virginia used him a lot. He can go out and, and, and create plays. He's good after the catch. Um, he's a little older. I think he'll be close to 24 when the season starts. Uh, it's a guy I could see. I honestly think Malik Washington would maybe be higher on the Chiefs board than Jalen McMillan just because of the way they play, the size differential, and Malik Washington. But Malik Washington doesn't have, like, exceptional uh, play, like, like play speed. He, he don't get you horned up. You don't yeah. get horned up about Malik Washington. But he's good. He's he's solid. I think the Chiefs would like Malik Washington probably a little more than they like Jalen McMillan. Christy Peterson says, hey, Mike and Steve, I DM'd you guys on Instagram. It was totally random, but I was desperate. Not sure if you saw it. I'll uh, check it right now. Mike normally uh, – Mike normally – controls the old instagrams so mike you can go check that out chris right i'll answer this question he says thrash from louisville uh so with jamari thrash i think you have like great to to elite like 10 second split like he, he's got like a crazy quick burst 
My problem with Thrash is I don't think he's a great route runner, and I feel like Jamari Thrash falls down every time he catches the football. Yeah. Like when, when I watch tape, this guy loses his footing every time he catches a ball and goes down. Like he, he's you're not going to get a lot of yak out of him. Um, I don't think he's bad, but I think where a lot of people have him ranked is, is a little high. I feel like Jamari Thrash would be a guy that you could take a shot on in like the fourth round, and I'd be okay with it. Right. Anytime before that, I don't. I don't like it. So it seems a little risky. Jamari Thrash. Um, Jamari Thrash to me is um, he's not overly big. He's six foot one eighty eight. He's not overly fast, although he does run a four four six. He's quick. Like his ten yard split. Right. Like is doesn't pretty... have a good vert. Uh, doesn't have big hands. Contested catch rate stunk. It was 15.8% and 11% drop rate. But the funny thing was, when he went to the senior bowl, he was flat out mossing people. It was insane. This dude was just catching. And he was doing like um Jamar Chase push-offs. Like, dude, it, you, the ball would be getting close and you'd see him just push the guy off just enough that the official would let it go and he'd catch the ball. I was like, he's savvy for some reason. I don't like him, but I moved him up a few spots. I ended up comping him to, listen yeah. to this comp. I comped him to Rakeem Jarrett. Remember him last year? He was going to come on the show. Yeah. This is my comp. Rakeem Jarrett, if Rakeem Jarrett were an ex-wide receiver with slightly better ball skills and production. <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Like <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Like but yeah, Jamari Thrash, he's from UofL. He's right up the road from us. I don't particularly love UofL, but you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, Tommy Smith says, I can see the Chiefs possibly going after Malachi Corley. What are y'all's thoughts if they do? Uh, Tommy, I like Malachi Corley as a player, but I just think that if the Chiefs go after him, it would be like <sighs> just beating your head into a wall, a brick wall. Yep. Uh, because they took Sky Moore. They refused to use Sky Moore the way that he's intended to be used. He is a... a, a a freaking yak guy. Like we're supposed to be getting sky more of the ball quickly in screen passes and letting him work. If the chiefs did that, which they did it in a very, very small sample size in a couple games last year. And it was effective, but they go right back away from it, putting him out wide, making him do things. He's not good at. That's exactly what Malachi Corley is. He's a guy that has to get the ball in his hands quickly and then get yak. If the chiefs yeah. are not going to dedicate Sky Moore to doing it and letting him succeed, they're not going to do it to Malachi Corley. So I feel like it would definitely be just beating your head into a wall. Like, so I, I would probably be a little irritated if the Chiefs draft Malachi Corley for that reason. I feel like if you're not going to give Sky Moore a chance to do what he does, why are we going to get a guy that you have to give the same chance to? It makes no yeah. sense. Um, yeah, just what you said, Malachi Corley is a. He's a guy that he, he, he was recruited to Western as a corner. <laughs> he had two picks as a senior in high school. He comes you know who should corner. have been a corner? Who? Marquez Valdez Scantling. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he was recruited as a corner. He played running back. <laughs> they moved him to wide receiver. He's just a guy like, look, you know, if you take him mid forties or fifties and you just throw on the ball a few times, he's going to give your quarterback a few easy catches and he can make something happen after the catch. But Chiefs just shown that they're not willing to do that, or you'd have done it with Sky Moore. They just won't do it. So if you're right. expecting him to be a route running technician, not him. And he doesn't have the greatest hands either because he's not been a receiver for a while. Um, anyways, Christy wrote me on uh, – here's what Christy said. The old Instagrams. Yeah, she said she's desperate because her pup, her fur baby, is named Mally and was just recently diagnosed with idiopathic epilepsy. And she's trying to raise money to have it treated. So she gave me a GoFundMe link. And you know what? I don't care to promote that for you because I love pups. So I'm going to throw ahead and I'm going to just, uh, I'll send that message out right there. So if you guys love pups and want to help Christy out, there you go, man. There's the GoFundMe. Go donate. Like, yeah, I'm completely fine you guys with do throwing that. that out there for you. Like, we appreciate when you guys throw out, uh, you know, super chats and things like that and help support the channel and help us be able to keep doing this kind of stuff. But if you got a few extra bucks, go help go help out uh, yeah. Christy. Christy said we're both big fans of All Chiefed Up. Mally's a big fan of the show. <laughs> yeah. We got we to take care of her. Yeah, man. So you all go do that. Go do that. Uh, real quick, uh, we're probably going to be with you guys for 15, 20 more minutes. Um, coming up on the two-hour mark. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us on a Saturday night, as usual. 
Um, you could be doing a lot of things, but you're here hanging out, talking cheese football. It shows how hardcore you are. Uh, do us a favor, hit the like button if you haven't. It just takes a second. It helps us out. Also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Uh, stick around. Get in, the, get in the chat. We have an awesome crew. Everybody here is amazing. It's always a good time. Um, please spread the word. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Everybody that loves the Chiefs. Where to find some good Chiefs content. Help us grow the channel. Uh, we're going to try to get this thing to where we can do it full time and and really dedicate a lot of time and resources to it and continue to make better content for you guys. So that's something that we're working on ourselves. Uh, so definitely appreciate you guys for that. Also, I'm going to say it one more time. Um, we did make our Patreon $1 memberships. So just for $1 a month, you can be a patron and you get all kinds of free, like it won't be free because you're paying a dollar, but it's essentially free content. You're getting extra bonus content, a lot of draft content on there and, and you'll get the whole back catalog. If you, if you go join now, you can, you can unlock everything. Uh, it's definitely worth one buck. Uh, and I, that would, that would go to help support the channel. And uh, it's kind of a thank you to you guys that, that did it for $10 a month. If you were a $10 a month patron, feel free to switch it to a dollar. If you'd like to keep it at 10, there's still that tier. And that's just if you want to help pay a little bit extra each month to support the channel. We appreciate that as well. Um, also, merch.allchiefedup.com. You can get yourself some, some fresh merch over there. You can look all fly and some All Chiefed Up stuff. Go do it. Go do that. That's another way to support the channel. All Chiefed Up. Let's see, what is it? Merch.allchiefedup.com. So check yes. that out as well. Um, yeah, man. Uh, go help Molly. Ma Mally, I'm sorry. Go help Mally. Mally. Uh, help Christie's putt Mally. And that'd be awesome. Um, let's see, man. With the draft, we, we've talked about almost everything, right? One thing that we tend to overlook, and I think is a very important part of the draft, would be inside offensive linemen. It, it, we're... They're easy to forget because they're not a sexy pick, but we definitely need line, you know, offensive line depth. We have Trey Smith who's getting ready to get the bag. We've got Joe Tooney who's getting the bag and probably needs to be not getting the bag soon. And then, you know, like we lost Allegretti in free agency. We did sign back Mike Caliendo. I saw that, but we still need some help. We need some help there. So do you think there's any guys in the draft that the chiefs could go after? Uh, uh, we've talked about like, uh, I don't know. I'm Layden Robinson as like a late round pick, um, <clears throat> who's from Texas A&M. Yeah. But you know, are there any guys that you could see the Chiefs taking a flyer on early, and really surprise some people? Like, what if they took a, uh, what if like Jackson Powers Johnson falls to thirty two, or, right. or Graham Barton were to fall, like which I don't think right. will happen. But if something like that did, do you think the Chiefs could really surprise everybody and take a guard early? Yeah, uh, Graham Barton. Yeah, I don't think I think Graham Barton is going to go really high. People are loving his versatility. Um, right. But I'm with you. Jackson Bauer Johnson could be there. I don't think they do that because I think he's more of a center. Uh, I was having this conversation with Pops last night. He's not under the assumption that he thinks Creed's a lock. Um, I think Creed's more of a lock than Trey Smith. Um, yeah, I would agree. With I that. think they like Creed, and I know Creed had some snapping issues. But you got to remember, remember he was a lefty and Patrick wanted it right-handed, so he's kind of learning it. I think they're going to lock up Creed. Yep. I really do. I think Trey is who might end up leaving. And he'll probably get a bag somewhere else. So it Man, wouldn't surprise that's, that's me. That's a tough hit right there, ain't it? It is a tough hit. They do like Mike Caliendo. And Mike Caliendo's pretty good at what he does. But I'm with you. I do think, because you, uh, you lost our boy, uh, Kennard. You've, you've lost yeah. Allegretti. Yeah, there's a few guys. So look. Cooper Beebe, I would love in the second round. If you if he fell to us at 64, I would be all for Cooper Beebe all day, every day. Um, I really like Christian Haynes. Oh, yeah, Cooper Haynes Beebe is a UConn. monster. I like yeah, him. Yeah, he is. Uh, Christian Haynes out of UConn, they've already talked to Christian Mahogany. Uh, I have many leather-bound books, and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've already talked to him. Uh, mahogany. But I, I talked to Brochmo. Mason McCormick out of South Dakota State. Absolutely love him. Tanner Bordellini out of Wisconsin. Dominic Pooney out of Kansas. There's a lot of guys there. I mean, there are. He, even C.J. Hansen out of Holy Cross. I think at some point they could take an interior guy. I would not be um, opposed to it. And like you said, you think it comes at 32? 
No, I think it's a little rich. But Cooper Beebe in round two would be just beautiful. I kind of wonder, though. Cooper Beebe is my favorite of the bunch. You think yes. Cooper Beebe or um, Christian Mahogany would be higher on their list? I like because Beebe better. I do, too. But Mahogany's they, got they took a bad footwork. With Mahogany, right? Yeah, Mahogany's footwork's a little sus. I do think it got better over his last year of college. Like, when I watched the tape, I felt like it, he improved. Yeah. Uh, I did notice that, but he's still got some questions there. Uh, Cooper Beebe is just a solid pick. Like, I feel like you can't miss there. Like, dude, dude's a beast. I, I like him a lot. Um, but Mahogany, uh, he does have, you know, some Trey Smith traits where he likes to play nasty. He likes to finish blocks. Uh, he likes to get after some guys. So, I mean, I don't know. But I would assume BB would be above him. Right. Um, I like the idea of the putting together the ACU all boom bust team. Yes. But you know what else we should do too? Because I mean, I don't think it would take but like what ten minutes. Do a Mike and Steve, um, all my guy team for each of us. The all horned up team. Yeah, like do an all horned up team for both of us and, and see who would come in our all. That way. What do you do? Say. Just pick one from each position. Just yeah, one player something like from that, or just yeah. Or like a top ten. It could be any position. Yeah, like a horned up ten or something. <laughs> do eleven, so it can be your horned, horned up team up, there. Yeah. Just the all horned up team. I like that idea. It's kind of funny. Hey, if we do videos on this and y'all don't watch them though, and then YouTube tells me that our core audience is not watching our videos and puts us in the uh, the he's dungeon. putting you in time out. He's putting you in time no, out because YouTube puts us to in the, the dungeon. Pit. They send they us do. to the pit. Just yesterday, they said your viewers aren't watching your videos, and I said what? And then YouTube sent back a message and said to the pit, and they should <laughs> kick the, the video pit. to the pit. And to the pit. you guys did it to us. It just went right to the pit, and it said, "Thank." It said, "Your your usual viewers sent you to the pit," and I said, "Dag on it, Mike. You must have done something they didn't like." Nobody watched to find out. They 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 didn't like you today. They had better video. things to do. <laughs> they have they have lives to live, man. That's what I say, man. Uh, it's tough <laughs> off season. People look. People got to decompress. It's been nice out today. People do things with their families. On it's hard to release content on weekends, but with the draft coming up, we do have to take the most of any given day because you can't release multiple videos in a day, right? Like YouTube just will not allow that one. No, that's a big no no. So yeah, we sometimes will have to release on weekends, and I know you guys aren't going to watch them, but you'll get around to them. We know, we know. YouTube don't like it. They're like, oh god, they freak out after about an hour. Yeah, uh, Lego says that we should do a subscription only call in show, dude. That sounds awesome. I'd love to do something like that, but unfortunately, the way YouTube is, we can't risk that. Because if someone calls in and says the wrong thing, our channel's done for. Like it's yeah, I kind of like the idea. I wonder how uh, how could you do a call in? Wouldn't it be cool to like on the radio? You know how they call in on the phone, you can actually hear them. I tell you what, we could do, and it wouldn't be as fun. But if we we could definitely like give out our email and be like, hey, send in a voice recorded question or whatever you want to say. And we can screen them first. That's a good idea. We could screen it and then play the recording. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody cares to. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> that's the only way we'd be able to do it, unfortunately, because YouTube is uh, very, very touchy. They're very sensitive little fellas. And if you say the wrong thing, we just have no channel. Oh, yeah. They... Don't hurt their feelings. Yeah. <laughs> Don't a, hurt them. The Wild West over here. Y'all Real says, just don't know where Chiefs go. Newton, defensive tackle. Kool-Aid, cornerback. Guyton, offensive tackle. Morgan, offensive tackle. Mitchell, wide receiver. Worthy wide receiver. One of them, I think, is going to draft. And then Senate, tight end, second or third. Man, I mean, all of those picks would be solid in their own right, except for we're not big on Morgan. Um, but I think we could work with Guyton. Obviously, we would like Jerzon Newton or Kool-Aid McKinstry. Uh, as far as wide receiver goes, Mitchell and Worthy, I do like those guys. Don't get me wrong. They're high up on our board. But I, I do feel like they both have traits I don't like. Like, I don't like them as much as I like a lot of the other guys. And, and, and that goes for all the Texas guys. I feel like even they're tied in, Jatavion Sanders. They are all 
100% guilty of being completely lazy and not playing on plays where they don't get the ball. If it's not designed for them to get the ball, they don't run routes. They're lazy. They don't block. Uh, those are the things I saw with those Texas guys. And so that, that does scare me a little. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm with you with Morgan. You know what I thought about Morgan, though? Ben Sennett, though, baby. Yeah. Um, Jordan Morgan, I think, and we talked about this with Broschmo. I think people are going to come around to the fact that he's got 32-inch arms and he's going to get kicked inside the guard. So I kind of wonder, what if you got him at 32? You tried him at left tackle. Say he doesn't do well or Wanye just beats him out. Could you not have him, could you not kick him to right, to right guard and have your Trey Smith back up? Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. I Who? think he'd be a heck of a guard. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could definitely do something like that. Maybe you could do uh, like I said, maybe man, you could any, play, take Tooney's job at left, you know, guard after any, any type of offensive line depth is welcome. I yeah. mean, we need it. We do. Um, man. So one player, I, I think we talked about him just a, a bit earlier, but I, what about Darius Robinson at the end of the first round? Do you think the chiefs would literally go back to back drafts with drafting an edge rusher in the first round? A hometown guy too. Right, I don't know if they do it. I don't know if they would do it, but I like. But the what? Pick. What a pick! Yeah, he's a good pick. I think, I think he could definitely go before that. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, he he got invited, so he's going to be sitting in the room. Now, Will Levis was there last year feeding his picks. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we don't. We won't have Will Levis there this look, year. Darius Robinson. I don't know if he'll be that guy. I think somebody's going to take the shot on him in round one. He's. He's pretty dominant at what he does. But he is kind of like a tweener, right? Like, you don't know if he's going to be defensive tackle, defensive end. Do you call him he's, a wiener? Yeah. A, a, a tweener. A little tweener wiener. Oh. Tweeny weeny. Ozark Hillbilly. Uh, I think the the consensus with a lot of people was that I'm not actually your brother that Broschmo is. Broschmo. We kind of have the same, like, nose. We, dude, I was watching it in look, my house. Y'all look pretty close. Yeah, I was watching it in my house on TV, just watching Broschmo, and somebody comes by. I'm not even going to say the name. They just come by, and they're like, you watching yourself on TV? you that full of yourself? I'm like, I'm watching Broschmo. Like, what you, that's not me. And they didn't believe it until they stopped and examined it. <laughs> they examined it. They even said Did that, they make uh, you stand by the TV? Yeah. And they're like, wait a second. Sometimes I get sinus issues. Like, we know. Because remember last year I got a sinus infection and I recorded some videos. And God forbid you work when you're yeah. sick. You know, there was like three or four shorts where everybody just had to tell me, dude, your nose is stopped up. Yeah, I know. What do you want me to do? You want me to be a baby <laughs> and go lay down and not do nothing for two weeks? Like, shut up. Uh, but anyways, Bro Schmo has that too. And bro dude, Schmo. it's constant. So like, we even got the same allergies, bro. I don't get it. <laughs> That's great. Hey, let us know in the chat. If me and Mike didn't tell you we were brothers and you didn't know that, would you think we were? We've actually, like, back in the day when we were younger, we worked at uh, places together, and there were people that worked with us for up to a year and reali and then realized we were brothers after that. They didn't even think we were related. It's kind of weird. Like, we don't look, like, perfectly alike, but I think if you're around us enough to know, like, we're pretty I feel similar. like it's more I, – I, I get the uh, – I get the feedback sometimes that people know we're brothers because of the way we act or the way that we talk or do certain things like our mannerisms or our sense of humor and things like that. But I feel like a lot of people, if they don't know that and they just look at us, they don't think that we look that much like brothers. No, I feel like I kind of look like dad's side of the family. You kind of look like mom's. Something like that. Like but sometimes I feel like, like I'm little... turning into pops the older I get. Yeah, that's just because you're getting bald. Yeah, maybe. Bald and fat, so I'm automatically Pops. Pops. Pops is, <laughs> you know where Pops is tonight? He's not even here. Pops drove up to Indiana and went to some races. He, he went to oh, did he? some race cars. Like, they were doing figure eight races tonight. That's where he's at. Yeah, he asked me if I wanted to go, and at first I said, yeah. And then I said, oh, yeah, we got a live. I can't go. So I was kind of bummed, man. I was going to go with some figure eight. They were doing figure eight school buses. Oh, who don't want to watch some figure eight school buses, baby? I went to that See, last year though, and they they were afraid to hit each other. I'm like, what's the point? Oh yeah, what's the point of having a figure eight school bus if you ain't gonna crash? Jeez. Chief Kelsey says Robinson's RAS was what four point five. He had a great uh, MU workout though. Was his RAS really that low? Uh, 
Dang. I didn't know that. He, well, he tested like a bad 40. Like that was one of his like bad. Times. I got to look it up but, now. That's wild. Like he's been like, you know, from like. Yeah, he had a 495. Um, 40 yard dash, which is pretty bad. And he had a one seven three ten 10 yard dash or 10 yard split. My bad. But his hands are elite, almost 11 inch hands, 34 and a half inch arms and a 35 inch vert. He was pretty much unguardable at the senior bowl. Um, had like an 18% win rate this year. And then like he said, the Missouri pro day the other day, he looked very good. Like there were scouts saying, if he don't go in the first round, it's a crime. And then, Lo and behold, he got the invite. So, I think uh, actually, uh, I think you might have a mix up with somebody, Chief Kelsey. Darius Robinson's RAS score was a nine point six four out of ten. Was it? Unless they're bringing up a different Darius Robinson. Hold on, defensive tackle, Missouri, twenty twenty four. Yeah, nine point six four. The only thing he graded low in was weight at two eighty five. Did you find it? I've got this, but see, yeah. this is a, this wasn't, this is a, uh, it's like unofficial or something? unofficial. So I don't know if they've ever updated it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. That's all I have though. So I don't know. I, I find it hard to believe that a 40 yard dash of a four nine five would show 8.88 in the great composite. Isn't that weird? For his position? I guess so, yeah, because they're doing a defensive tackle. Because you got to think, like, down the line. elite edge rusher speed is like Micah Parsons, uh, the dude coming out this year, Dallas Turner. They have they run, like, four fours, and it's, like, insane. You know, of course, they play stand-up, uh, you know, kind of edge rushing, but it's a different thing, but I still think right. that's it. Give got me a, got give a 10-bomb uh... from Chris Wright real quick. Oh, yeah. He says, night fam. He says, Leggett, Sweat, Fisher. Theo, Burton, the rest is in between trust. I, I, dude, Burton. If you could get Burton with your fifth pick, that's insane. I, I think, I think Burton will go higher than people think. Yeah. Uh, Chris Wright, appreciate all of your donos tonight, my man. You're a legend. You're freaking awesome. And thanks for supporting the channel. You guys throw some ketchups in the chat for Chris Wright. Have a good night, my man. Yeah. Have a good one, brother. Appreciate you. Yeah, what were you trying to say before I cut you off? I was trying to say, um, what's a good comp maybe for uh, for uh, Darius Robinson? Like, who do you think somebody in the league? Like, just give me a random name. Like, he's going to be a defensive end. You want to compare him to Felix? Let's see what uh, his uh, what his RAS score would be to to Felix. Let me find it. Uzama. Let me find out what a comparison would be with Felix. Because I'm very curious. Okay. So his updated RAS, by the way, is a 7.78. It did go down. Did it? It did go down. Here, I'll bring it in for you. Um, it is right here. Here we go. So if I if you comp him to Felix, you know what's funny? Felix swamped him. Did he? There it is. Uh, weight. That, the weight's the big one, though. Yeah. Felix is getting Felix? drove off the line yeah. so much in the run game. Um, he still made, yeah. man, he made a play in uh, the, was it the AFC Championship game yeah. in the run play? Felix came in there and did his job, son. And then look at this. Felix didn't do a bench, a 40, a 20, or a 10. And if he had scored anywhere lower, that 9-3-3 would have fell off the map. Yeah. So... We'll see, man. I, I don't think it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Uh, Y'all real says uh, that he thinks Anthony Gold reminds him of Hill. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people saying Tyreek Hill kind of like vibes. He's fast. Tommy, uh, Tommy says, did y'all see Mel Kuyper's mock draft where that tackle from Washington was falling to the second round? I thought that was crazy. Isn't he a first round pick? Or is he talking about Ro Rosengarten? Mm, uh, Kuyper had Rosengarten in the first. That's got to be who he's talking about, though, right? Has to be, but yeah, he had Rosengarten in the first. I actually called that. Remember me saying Mel Kuyper will sneak yeah. Rosengarten into one of his mock drafts in the first round? He yeah. loves it. I said that straight up. I'm going to make a short. Steve, make a short about that. I don't know where I did it. I'm going to have uh, me reading Mel Kuyper's mind. 
<laughs> what, what, who did he have? It, surely he wouldn't. It's not Troy Fatanu. We know that. Right, that's what I'm thinking. He ain't going to fall out. But if that's it, that, that's what he's talking about. There's no Is way that... he had Fatanu. <laughs> uh, Mel Kuyper. Let me go look up his new one. Uh, we Raiders just did Mama. The mock. She says, Can you shout out our daughter, Autumn Wind Rogers, born at 25 weeks due to complications and didn't make it? Let's salute this angel. Yep. Shout out, Autumn. Sorry to hear that. That's sad. Raiders mom. Shout out. You live in Cali? Or maybe. Could, could be Vegas. Vegas. Maybe. Maybe. But sorry to hear that. That that sucks. Yeah, that does suck. Um Gary Holland says Mike and Steve is there a linebacker being drafted from Kentucky. Uh people are sleeping on Travin Wallace. Uh and I don't think it's people as in NFL scouts, I think it's people like that do rankings at PFF. Because if y'all didn't watch the video that I that come out today, I did a mock draft and I took Trevin Wallace. I got him in the seventh freaking round. Yeah. Which is stupid. That's insane. He ain't going to be there. And what's the other guy's name from Kentucky? There's another one too. Oh, Drew Phillips is coming out corner. Yeah. He is getting hype, dude. If Drew Phillips gets into the top 64, which is the first two rounds, I would not be shocked. But I would be yeah. shocked, right? Mike, the son's name was Raider. That's why. That's why. Oh, so, the uh, son's name was Raider. Okay, that's cool. I've never heard that name. That's kind of cool, actually. I like that name. Man. Yeah, that's... Kentucky puts out some decent players sometimes. I mean, we just saw Josh Allen get paid. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, I never really heard much about, um, and of course his name slipped my mind right when I was getting ready to say it. Who was the guy that played edge last, was it last year or the year before? Josh Paschal. How did he, how's he doing in the NFL? Right. I don't think he's panned out too well. But Josh Paschal was a little bit slow. Remember his tape and everything? He kind of come out a little like clunky. It was kind of strange. Kentucky always supposed to have like decent pass rushers. Remember they had another good pass rusher a few years ago and he got to the league and didn't really do much. I don't remember his name. It's hard to remember. Steve, yeah. we have, you're talking about, you're talking about James, J- 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 Jamin Davis or Jamin Davis yeah. or however he said his he name. He was a linebacker, but I think he, he was an was athletic decent. freak too. Yeah, he was like, good. Yeah, he was a monster. Are there yeah. any uh, corners? That you like, uh, you know, like late in the draft or maybe day two, day three that we haven't talked about? Any corners or defensive ends? Those are like two positions we well, never talked about. I mean, about. You, you know that I love Kamal Haddon, but super small sample size. Dude was just hurt. Yeah. Um, let me try to think, man. As far as defense, I, I love uh, the safety from Utah. Oh, Cole Bishop. Cole Bishop. I like him. Um, yeah, I like Malik Mustafa from Wake Forest. Um, he can play. Uh, that's that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, Doctor Michael Colick, Colick, I don't know which seventh round running back would be your favorite pick uh, from Germany. He's from Germany. Uh, nice, nice. Um, man, um, Frank Gore Jr. I like him. Do you like Frank Gore Jr.? I do. And then there's that guy that you liked from Monmouth. Yeah, Jaden Sheridan. Sheridan. I'm a big Jaden Sheridan guy. Um, yep. Blake Watson out of Memphis. He could get to the seventh round. Wouldn't be surprised. Rasheen Ali, which they've already talked to, he could slide all the way to the seventh. There's some good guys that could really go that deep, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you who I think might go a little bit. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he'll go later than than I think, but I have this weird feeling that we, you would be able to get Ray Davis in the fourth or fifth round. And he's a beast. Yeah, I have him as a round three grade, but again, I don't think there's going to be a running back to like pick 50. That's what I'm on. saying. Like, and, and dude, he's, he's a you beast. You could get Ray Davis in the fourth. That would be a steal. He's just so thick. He's just a bowling ball, man. You know, he's was, just... yeah. Let's see. O- Ozark Hillbilly likes uh, Rake Straw. I think he'll go Rake early Straw. second early second round. I yeah, don't think the Chiefs a- take a flyer on a cornerback in the first. So I just don't see that. Dude, I, 
Look, there's some names, man. Some cornerback names that I think are going to pop up boards. And, and I think they're already they're starting to. One of them is a guy that I warned you all about on a night that I wasn't here. And somebody asked about Max Melton. You remember that name? Yep. He is flying up boards. If Max Melton goes in the second round, it would not surprise me. I think Mike Sainer still from Michigan is going to be a heck of a nickel cover corner. He is going to be awesome. If he was to go in the second round, I would not be surprised. Um, DJ James from Auburn. I think people like his uh, stop-start ability, his hip movement. I think people are going to love DJ James. He could probably be drafted in maybe the third round, early fourth. And then I really think uh, Shao Smith-Wade from Washington State. The Chiefs have talked to him twice. That is a guy that if you could get maybe in the fifth round, which I don't know if he'll fall that far, but maybe the fourth or fifth, that could be one. And by the way, there's a guy coming out. Have you heard about a Quantez, Quantez Stiggers who played for the Toronto Argonauts in the CFL? He's actually putting his name in the draft, man. He's, Quantez Stiggers. Quantez Stiggers. He's 5'11 and, he and paid, a half. he played for the who? Toronto Argonauts. He played in the CFL. He didn't go to college. He said he wasn't going to go to college. He went straight to the CFL, and now he's trying to go to the NFL. So he's took like a weird path to get here. Dude, I watched some film. He's good. He's good. He could be a surprise day three pick, dude. He ran a 4-4-5 four, four, with a 1-5-2 10-yard split. His last yeah. name's Stiggers. That just reminds me of Tigger. Yeah. From uh, like a Boing Boing Winnie the play. Pooh. Yeah. So I mean, Sam Lofton says TJ Tampa. Mike, you're a TJ Tampa guy. What do you think he's early second round? Um. Yeah. Uh, he did run pretty slow at the pro day. He ended up running like a four, five, six. So it kind of fell off a little bit. Uh, at first, I was like, I think he could be a man to man guy. And then the more I watch him, I'm like, I think he would do better in like zone type defenses and then even bro schmo said that he was seeing that too and he's like dude we thought the same thing and i was like yeah because i think we're long lost siblings um <laughs> but yeah I, I love tj tampa i really do i think he start looking for tj tampa to come off the board somewhere around 35 ish i'd say 35 to 55 somewhere in that range yep yep well we appreciate you guys being here with us tonight i think we're gonna call it a night it's time to go kick the feet up and try to get some rest here uh, but yep. definitely appreciate you guys. Hit that like button on the way out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, come hang out with us more often. Be on the lookout. We got a video that dropped today. Go watch it if you haven't already. We got some shorts out. Have a video coming out in the morning. Um, and, and also, like, just <laughs> so tons of content. Coming out. Yeah. Tons of content. And you can go over to patreon.com slash allchiefedup. Become a member for $1 a month. One freaking dollar a month. Ooh, no, and there'll be all better. kinds of extra content over there as well. Uh, so please do that. But we appreciate you guys being here. And uh, I guess we're out for the night. So uh, go Chiefs. Go Chiefs.